Hello everyone, and welcome to Fiction TV, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto become a god of peace, blood upon the snow. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Balder? Are you awake? Still not used to hearing that name. You'd think a man would have gotten over it by now being reborn as a god. But no, some things never quite change from your first go around. Even after nearly seven years of hearing all of Asgard call him by his second name, there was still the faint pause, a brief flicker of confusion he hadn't quite mastered. HRMPH. Thoughts for later. It was warm, he was tired, and someone was trying to wake him from a very pleasant dream. A rather heady dream involving a certain trio of Valkyries and a rather pleasant evening he was looking forward to. Result. Ignore the meddler, roll over, and pretend he hadn't heard her. Nope not awake at all. A hand nudged his shoulder, son, I need you to wake up. He batted at her hand, go away, mother, ma sleeping over here. He felt two firm fingers pinch his nose, blue eyes snapped open, squinted against the sun. A familiar face stared back, he sat up and managed a sleepy yawn. Hey, mum. Felt weird calling someone that at first, but he'd grown used to it over time. Kashina she most assuredly was not, but Freya was still a damn good parent. One out of two wasn't so bad. Is that all you have to say? She ran a hand through his blonde hair. You know you can't sleep out here, you're worrying me. Blearily, he realized where he was. He'd fallen asleep on a bench while sunning himself in the training grounds again. Not uncommon in Asgard. The realm was a lovely place really couldn't claim otherwise despite all he'd seen but there was just something about it that felt lacking at times. Maybe it was the air, or the airs Odin put on. No, no, don't think of the old man, he'd ruin his mood. Karama scoffed. Even if you want to kill him. He scoffed a little. Even then, it wasn't anything personal, really. He simply didn't trust the man he called, father, in this life. The Allfather was well spoken and clever. His capriciousness second to none. His schemes made Orochimaru look like some juvenile bully. Never enough to draw his eye, never enough to truly rouse the realms against him, but his deeds remained and his crimes were more numerous than the stars themselves. They might ever admitted to his face, but the Acer feared their leader, whispered he had gone mad. The answer was simple. One of these days, Odin would have to die, simple as. He'd have to warn Mimir beforehand, wouldn't do to have him be trapped in a tree or something. Shouldn't be too hard to get Thor and Seif on board. He'd already made inroads there with their kids, adorable little buggers. And from there, who knew? He'd not aired his plans to anyone else and he intended to keep it that way for as long as he could. Odin was a clever bastard, but he dealt with schemers before. In the long run, he felt he had the measure of his so-called father and once he fell, it would be time for a. Why don't you go train with the Valkyries? Freya gave him a nudge, breaking him out his reverie. GNA was asking after you again, to say nothing of Iyer and Hildur or Mist and Wrist. They would, wouldn't they? A blonde brow rose, no Sigrun this time? She coughed. I believe Mimir has her, occupied. Ah, working on a son, were they? Good for them. They deserved some happiness. Another yawn had him reeling. Gods, he really was tired. Freya mom. Touched a hand to his shoulder, he honestly just wanted to sleep. But Freya worried. She thought something was wrong with him, that he slept too much these days, and maybe he did. Should we exert ourselves this time, fiend? He slapped a hand against his tattooed chest with a sigh. I suppose I'll see what they want. Probably to get knocked around the yard some more. If he was honest, he enjoyed fighting the Valkyries. Kept him sharp, ya yeah, no. Better than deal with Thor, at any rate. At Leah's they were sober most of the time. Easier on the eyes, too, once he got their masks off, among other things. That's my boy. Do be careful, dot and don't get hurt. E.H. He shrugged and lurched to his feet. No need to worry about that. As though sensing that very thought, Freya's voice echoed after him taking on a teasing tone, and try not to give me grandchildren yet. Naruto lazily flipped her off over his shoulder and kept walking, it was a good life as the god of peace. He'd fight to keep it that way. Oi! I'm rather fond of Brock. Let me put it plainly. 
stab that dwarf and I stab you, everywhere. Wow. Nine Valkyries against little, ol me. I'm honored. His fist crashed out. Hildur rocketed backwards, hit a wall, and went limp. Oops. He lowered his fist. Eight, now. You're like me, son. Odin slung an arm around his shoulders. You want answers, don't you, Balder? With the other, he gestured to the broken crack in the world, that glimmering, shivering sliver of green light hung in the air. You want to know out what it's all about. Naruto heaved a sigh. Answers would nice, yes, but he didn't trust the one-eyed man. Odin only ever asked after him when he needed something. There's someone I'd like you to find for me, knew it. Right, sick of you Norns already. He hefted his hammer. You believe in fate? Destiny? Think you can predict me? Predict this? Heimdall. Stop being a prick. Now, now, Balder. Why would I ever listen to someone like Arg? He stumbled back, gurgling as a fist slammed into his face. My nose? You bastard, you broke my nose. Naruto lowered his fist. Read my mind all you like, you're slower than a cow compared to me. Ah, Thrud. Who's my favorite niece? She laughed and tucked her head into his chest. I'm your only niece, uncle. Still my favorite, and are those my nephews I see skulking in the corner? Magni, Modi, come give your uncle a hug, I bring gifts. Dot dot dot, I can't feel any of this, mom. However, he thrust a finger at her. I can understand why you did it. Fear makes us do terrible things. Everything's fine, I'll be just fine. Now take it away. I can't. Freya winced a little, flinching under the weight of his stare. It doesn't work that way, son. A lie. Fine. Hard way it was. Stop the spell, or I'll stop it myself. Blue eyes smoldered red. Can't I? Put the hammer down, Thor. You want me to put the hammer down? It was, in hindsight, a poor choice of words, Naruto found. He rocketed up into the air. Kratos stared, hum, the stranger before him stared back, unafraid of him, I thought you'd be bigger, but you're definitely the one, are you certain you're a giant, whatever you seek, I do not have it, huh, the pale man blinked, squinted, frowned, you're telling the truth, well, he reared back with a shrug, seems Odin doesn't know shit after all, sorry for wasting your time, have a nice day, wait, a hand clamped down on his shoulder, stopping him short with bone-crushing force. He felt his collarbone click beneath it. You serve Odin? Naruto heaved a rueful sigh and scratched the back of his head. Probably shouldn't have said that, huh? Leave my home. And do not return. All right, all right, I will. He waved hand. But from one god to another, you really ought to do a better job at hiding. Kratos rumbled a warning. Fine, fine I'm going. Be seeing ya. Naruto remembered the moment like it was yesterday. It began with a deal you see, as these things often do. He was no stranger to the concept of rebirth. If anything he'd become intimately aware of the strange cycle of reincarnation. He was living proof of it. Sasuke had been, too, once upon a time. Ashura and Indra, they were. Souls reborn throughout countless lifetimes over and over again, until they reached them. It was a fascinating thing when you looked back at it. What kind of strength did that take? Not only to pass on one's will to future generations, but their ideals. Not that it mattered anymore. Ideals were all well and good, but ideals had gotten them killed. They had died. Both of them. Their final battle in the valley had taken more than their arms, but their lives as well. Awful way to go, you know? Strange as it might sound, he didn't feel any regret over the way he died. Death had a way of clearing a man's mind. Sasuke had already passed on to the great beyond. Good for him. He hoped his old friend found peace from his tortured existence. Even so, he wasn't ready to walk into the light just yet, neither was Kurama. So when a voice offered them an out, suffice to say they jumped at it. A god of light and peace, of kindness. Even now he remembered the words he'd said in that moment. Why didn't you say so? Go on, send me right through. Don't mind living a second life with a title like that. Sounds fun. How little he knew, still, he'd taken the deal, and Kurama with him. All right. Now he opened his eyes. Let's see what we're working with here. It's a boy. 
His eyes snapped open. Lady say what now? Light rushed in and he found himself looking at a beautiful woman's face, her weary eyes framed by dark hair. Poor girl. She looked exhausted and. Oh. Oh. He understood, now. She was holding him. He was being held by this woman, who seemed large, but in reality, he was. Small. Hello, my sweet boy. She crooned softly, stroking the blonde crown of his hair. Welcome to the world. Realization broke like the dawn. No, 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 this did not just happen. Yuip. Had he possessed full control of this tiny new body of his, he would have rolled his eyes. As things stood, he merely huffed. Sneaky old man. When he'd taken the deal, he'd thought he would be reborn instantly near the age he'd died at the very least, not forced to start all over bit of a raw deal this. Speak for yourself. An angry rumble echoed at the forefront of his mind. It's cramped in here. I barely fit. Karama. He strained to answer back. I'm not imagining you, right? I wish you were. This is torture. I want out, on that they were in agreement. He wasn't used to being so. Restrained, swaddled up as he was. Yet for all that he didn't feel any weaker. The spark of chakra still lingered within him that, and something else. Whatever it was it left his mind sharper than ever. He was aware of every instant, every sensation, of the faces looming over him. Having his memories wiped would have been a colossal disaster. He wouldn't be himself without them. Maybe a restart was just what the doctor ordered after all. Better that than a reset. He's silent. The woman's voice intruded on his thoughts, fraught with worry, is he all right? Oh. Thoughts for later. Right, should probably make a noise or something. Dot wa. It almost came out as a question. Thank goodness. Her face softened. Hello, little Balder. Balder? That was his new name. The old voice hadn't mentioned that. Still, the woman seemed so sad. Why? Wasn't childbirth supposed to be a happy thing? Nevertheless, she smiled when she a hand ran a hand through the crown of his blonde hair. Will you smile for me? He found himself doing so despite himself. Let me see him. In an instant he found himself spirited away, swept out of her arms and into another's. The sudden motion dizzied him, so much so that it took a moment to orient himself. Aha! There he is. My boy. When he came to, he found himself blinking up at balding, one-eyed man. The latter grinned down at him with manic glee, his dark beard going gray. That one eye of his saw far too much for his liking. Well, well, he hummed. Here you are. As promised, aren't you remarkable? Wait a second. Naruto knew that voice, if not necessarily that face. It was the same he'd made the deal with. He scowled at him. Shish, shish, shish. The man's smile softened a little in the face of his anger. Everything will be all right. I promise. We're on the same side. You and I will be walking and talking in no time. He booped his forehead with one finger, his emotions burning bright even to his sixth sense. We're going to be working very closely together. A sigh echoed behind the two of them. You're acting like he'll respond, Odin. The old man, this, Odin, only smiled. Perhaps he will, Freya. Let me see my son. Of course, of course. He hummed and handed him over. Didn't mean to monopolize him. Here you are. Naruto found himself passed around once more already feeling felt the beginnings of a scowl form on his new face. So, the voice he'd heard belonged to a man named Odin. He had an agenda. Of course. Men like him always did. Time would tell if this bargain came back to bite him. Hopefully not. But if it did. Thor, get over here. Odin's voice distracted him. Come see your little brother. A low rumble reached his ears. Fine, fine. In an instant there was a third face staring down at him. A solid young boy, not quite a man, lumbered over to peer at him. Naruto noted dark eyes and red hair. The beginnings of what would one day be a great bristling beard filled his face. He's tiny. The older boy grunted, gonna be a runt. Naruto slapped a tiny fist against his nose. Thor recoiled, terribly started, hey. Freya smiled. Well, well. We know what he thinks of you. Now hush. I need to feed him. She pulled him close. It was then that Naruto realized something else. No one could understand him yet, or his protests, 
this time, his cry was far from feigned. Are you prepared, Lord Balder? A low voice brought Naruto back to himself, hauling him out of the daydream. He blinked, crackled his knuckles, squinted against the sunlight, remembered where he was, what he promised, and just what he was meant to be doing. Right, right. He'd spaced out again, hadn't he? Ten winged women stood arrayed before him, warriors all. He wished they wouldn't wear their helmets. They really did look quite lovely without them, but that was neither here nor there. No, today was a day for teaching. Wow. He couldn't help but smile as he stroked his blonde beard. Ten Valkyries against little, oh el me. I'm honored. GNA pressed a fist to her bosom and bowed her masked head. It is you who honor us today, my lord. None of that. Honor's all well good, but honor won't help the ten of Yaw win a fight against me. His fist crashed out as he spoke. Hildur rocketed backwards, hit a wall, and went limp. Oops. He lowered his fist with a mad grin. Nine, now. An anxious murmur went up from the rest. No, no, no that wouldn't do. Not at all. He lunged to meet them head on. Let the lesson begin. What followed wasn't as much a lesson as a mad brawl, full of wild wings, brutal blades and flying fists. Ire, ever the gentle sort, bowed out first when he knocked the wind out of her. The sister's wrist and mist went next, flung out the ring, followed by Gunnar, whom he sent sprawling with a single swipe. GNA gladly traded blows with him for a solid three seconds before he drove a knee into her gut, got a hold of her shoulders, and sent her spinning to the dirt. In less than a minute, their number was cut into five. Less now, when Rhoda made the mistake of flanking him with Ulrun, only to recoil as he grabbed them both and bashed their heads together. Their helms rang out with a sonorous crash. They slumped face first into the dirt, leaving but three of their number remaining. Kara smashed a fist into his face, the first to land a blow. He took it out of sheer curiosity, rode with, swept her legs, and kicked her into gear driffle. Only Gondol remained. He ducked her weapon, blocked a shot at his gut, and swept around her. His hands closed around her wings and tugged in warning. Yield. She yelped. I yield, great. He let her go, planted a palm against her back, and nudged her toward her sisters. That was great. You all endured a full three seconds longer than last week. That's an improvement. Now, go walk it off. GNA, I want a word with you tonight about your footwork. His mother's handmaiden tugged off her mask, took a step forward, nodded. He didn't miss the way her bright eyes flashed. In your chambers, my lord. But of course. The sound of clapping hands ruined the moment and left him contemplating deicide. Magnificent as ever, Balder. GNA bridled. Without her helm, her expressions were painfully honest. I'll kill him. Just say the word. Naruto rolled his eyes. Don't tempt me. Even without turning. He knew who he'd find sauntering their way. The hearty crunch of someone biting into an apple only confirmed his irritation. He knew of only one god who delighted in eating those awful things. Still, it would behoove him to at least act polite. Dot for now. Nothing to say. The words riled him to no end. I thought a brute like you could do more than grunt. Or are you too by with your horse? Every Valkyrie within earshot stiffened as one. Heimdall didn't seem to care. Now, now. No need to be cross. You all know it's the truth, don't you? Naruto's tongue betrayed him. Heimdall, stop being a prick. Aha. Uh -huh. He speaks. If there was one god he couldn't tolerate, it was this one. He rather enjoyed working with Tyr and Thor at times, but the watchman of the Acer aggravated him to no end. He'd chosen a particularly poor time today, seeing as his blood was still up and the Valkyries were still very much nearby. Punch him. Kurama growled in his ear punch him hard. He blew out a sigh. This is your one chance to leave, Heimdall. Now, now, Balder. Why would I ever listen to a faker like Arg? His would-be tormentor stumbled back, gurgling as a fist slammed into his face. My nose. He touched a hand to the bent, swollen orifice now occupying most of his face. You bastard. Words slurred out of him, muffled by the injury as he glared at him. You boke my dose. Naruto was tempted to break more than that, because you see, Heimdall read people. Their intentions. Likewise, he read him. He knew what he was, where he'd come from, what he intended to do to this realm. He wasn't sure when only that he had. 
He'd been quite vocal in his attempts to antagonize him since. Unfortunately for Heimdall, no one liked him. Ergo, no one believed him. Such was the case now as the Valkyries laughed at his plight. Naruto lowered his fist. Read my mind all you like, you're still slower than a cow compared to me. Heimdall seethed, glaring at him between his fingers. Luck, that's all this is, blind Lou. A fist found his face again with an audible smack, he cried out anew. Bathtard, he slurred, I bat ma ton da time, did he mean bite his tongue? Yuip. GNA turned her head, eyes alight, and hid a muffled snort behind her dominant hand. Luck, EH, Naruto had no need to shelter any such of his smile, what do you call the second time then? Heimdall snarled and spat at him. Wait until I tell the Allfather, son or not, Odin will be sure to punish you for this. He was still snarling when a third punch caught his chin and sent him flying into the distant wall of Asgard. He struck it with an audible crack. Were one to possess superior vision which every Go and Valkyrie certainly did they would have seen the stunned Acer god tumble all the way down to the ground. More than let out a ragged cheer at the sight of Heimdall's humbling. GNA sighed and ran a hand through her dark hair. You do realize that won't kill him, he's going to be absolutely insufferable now. Naruto rolled a bare shoulder, not my problem, shall we go? She looped her arm in his, as my lord commands, blood upon the snow. He broke my nose, E.H. Odin shrugged. You're alive, aren't you? Walk if off. All father. For the love of. Look, if Balder wanted you dead, you'd be dead. Like all those other guys. He waved a hand at him, not looking up from his desk. Now get out of here. I have work to do. Why do you keep punching me, Dunno? Why do you keep being a prick? I am not a arg. Stop smacking me already, wrist. Mist, come here. The twin Valkyries obeyed. So you're that Acer god what been running around the realms, E.H. He laughed. You must be Brock, and I take it you're Sindri. At your service, all right, I'll bite. What can you make for me? Sindri balked a little. W. Well, that depends on you. What do you want? Naruto smiled. Aha, there's my darling niece, I come bearing gifts. Freya opened her hands. Do you trust me, son? Thor raised his tankard of mead and drank deeply, thinking too much again, little brother. Naruto slammed a hand down on it, and you not enough, you said you'd stop this. Sparking blue eyes met his. I did stop. Now I'm starting again, Sif's fault. Dot you too had another argument again. Thor kept drinking. He swatted the mug out his hand. It flew across the mead hall. The Einherjar fell silent. Thor growled. Listen, you. No, he grabbed him by the beard. You listen to me, look, I get it. You screwed up. But you can be better than this. You have to be. Think about little Thrud. Easy for you to say. You're the favorite. You ain't a father. Thor glowered down at his hands. They still had blood on them. You don't know what it's like. No, but I'm about to. That sobered Thor right up. The fuck you say? Well. Apparently Valkyries can bear children after all, who knew? I'm gonna be an uncle? That's the part you take away from this? Thor continued to stare at him. He sighed. Yes, you're gonna be an uncle. Hammett met Anvil. Once, twice, thrice now. Time and time again it crashed down to strike the metal beneath. Battering smoldering steel into the desired shape. Banging out a steady cadence with speed and skill that would have been any sane smith's wet dream. Or nightmare, given how quickly the dwarf before him was working. Come to think of it, any sane smith would have been head over heels to have an Acer god in their shop, too. But these two were far from sane now, weren't they? Their work was famed across the nine realms, their craft legendary, their wit unparalleled, despite their peculiarities. They had forged all manner of things throughout the years wonderful weapons and terrifying tools, amazing armor and splendorous shields known by kings and gods alike. Had he a say, Odin would have happily locked them up and forced them to smith for Asgard all day. Which was precisely why he'd sought them out here, in their little home away from home. He had no need of bootlickers or lickspittles, these were neither. So you're that Acer pup what been running around the realms with Tyr, E.H.? Said Smith set his latest project to cool in a battle of water and squinted his way, 
uncaring of the geyser of steam that followed. Whatcha want with us? He didn't miss the hostility in that gaze. We already made that blasted bloody hammer for our idiot brother and I ain't about to make another for some up-jumped runt who thinks he's gonna be the next king of Asgard. An open and gloved, palm collided with his back, cutting him short, Brock. Bah. The blue dwarf shrugged off his brother's hand. Sawed off, Sindri. Ain't no point lying to this lot, might as well be honest. The last time you were, honest, you got yourself kicked out of Alfheim. A mighty guffaw answered him. Ain't my fault the buggers didn't know what a juicy knockin was. Setting that aside, Naruto Balder coughed into a fist and thumped a fist against his tattooed chest before their story could fall into lurid territory. You must be Brock. He glanced toward the more squeamish of the duo with a small smile. And I take it you're Sindri. The latter smartened up and puffed out his chest. We certainly are. The Holdra brothers, at your service. Hopefully so. Naruto planted his feet, swept one hand down to his belt, tugged an item free, and lobbed it their way. A heavy sack of hacksilver landed on their workbench with a heavy thunk, causing the worn wooden frame to creak beneath its weight. Both brothers balked. He took the chance to get his foot in the door, as it were. I'd like you to make something for me. Well, me and my nephews. Thor's brats? Leave it to Brock to cut to the meat of the matter. They're a damn menace. He fought down a rueful smile. Magni and Modi are better these days. Better, he says. I do say so. Laughter escaped him at the last. I'm their uncle. Those brats damn well better be behaving after the thrashing he'd given them last time. They would have killed that veneer god if he hadn't stepped in. Magni had a good head on his shoulders. It was just a matter of steering him in the right direction. And if Modi was acting up again, he'd have words for him. Wish for peace, prepare for war, as Tyr said. But that was neither here nor there. Work to be done and all that. Brock sniffed. What's in it for us? Aha. Curiosity. That was the way to their hearts. Besides money. Fame. Glory. A chance to correct your mistake. The Huldra brothers exchanged a terse look between one another. Naruto couldn't help but commiserate with them. Theirs was an old argument. He could see it in their eyes. It wasn't unknown to him. Thor was getting a little too swing happy with that hammer of his these days. Mjolnir was a famous weapon to be sure, but unfortunately it was also a very powerful weapon. In the hands of the God of Thunder. Well, the less said about that the better. He had his hands full trying to keep his big bugger of a brother from slaughtering every giant he could get his mitts on. Hence the reason he was here, indeed, he could already see Sindri warming to the idea. You're not the first to suggest that, Lord Balder. No, interesting. He could broach that topic later. For now, he had a task to attend. Best be quick about it while Odin wasn't watching. If he asked after his trip to Svartalheim, he could claim he'd tasked Brock and Sindri with making new weapons for the young sons of Thor. A pliable excuse and something his so-called, all-father, wouldn't be able to see through, should he come onocking. Karama grunted his agreement, he won't see this coming, there isn't a single raven near here. Right. Ravens. Odin's little spies, and wasn't that just another can of worms, really needed to find a way to free those poor, poor souls. No, no, one step at a time. Weapons and armor first. Then he could go about doing a little soul severing of his own when dear old dad wasn't looking. None of that lord stuff. He waved a hand quickly to silence his anger as much as the dwarves. Magni and Modi aside, I'd like you to make several things for me. First, he spent the better part of five minutes explaining what he was truly after, and then five more specifying what had to be used. By the end of it, Brock whistled. Sindri, however, wrung his gloved hands. That might take a while. How do we let you know when it's ready? Nothing simpler. Naruto tapped a hand to his belt and tossed a scroll their way. Open that when you need me. I have its twin right here. He held up another small roll of vellum. They're connected. Mine will pulse blue when you do. As to how I'll find you. Well, I have my ways. Brock planted both hands on the table. We'll be needing the blood of a god for all of those things you mentioned, especially last one. Naruto made to bite his finger. Nah. -uh. The Azure Vulgarian waved him down. Gotta be fresh. Lady prefers it that way. Oh ho. Awfully demanding. 
This lady of yours. When do I get to meet her? Brock shook a fist at him. When she's good and ready, bucko. All right, all right, sore subject. I'll let it be. He'd expected as much. The lady of the forge could be eccentric. Not even Odin knew what she looked like. Yet another thing he'd talked his father out of. Honestly, it was like watching a child. Take your eyes off him for one second and he could get to all manner of trouble. If this was what Mimir had to deal with every day, he pitied him. Hopefully he could keep him occupied until he returned. Which he should, soon. He set a hand to his hip. We're all set, then. Should be. Brock shrugged. Come back when it's done and you'll get her money's worth. Sindri perked up suddenly. Speaking of which, might I have a moment of your time? A blonde brow rose. We're talking now, aren't we? Not here. Brock grunted his acceptance. Fine, fine, make me do all the work. Naruto let the germophobic dwarf lead him to an adjacent room, one a good distance from the forge. An ugly feeling rose in the pit of his stomach. More secrets. Yay. As if, Balder, didn't have enough to juggle already. A cursory check confirmed there weren't any ravens hiding in here either at least, living or dead. Good. He'd sense the little buggers if they were. All right. He crossed both arms before his chest as said dwarf tugged the door shut behind them. What is it? Sindri didn't answer, not right away. He wrung his hands instead, took a deep breath, and. Is it true? A blonde brow arched. Is what true? You know, he gestured expansively, the stories. I'm afraid you'll have to be a bit more specific. There are an awful lot of myths about me. Karama yawned in the back of his head. More than I care to remember. You've been busy. I was asking after the happier ones. Sindri flung up his arms with an exasperated cry. You know. Where you, ah, help people. Really? Naruto felt his brow furrow. Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? I could tell you the time I shook hands with a many-armed giant, the day Frere and I got ourselves soused and fell into the light of Alfheim, or the night Skadi and I. Wait. Wait, wait. Sindri raised a finger. Scad? The Scaddy? As in Lady of the Hunt? Pale skin, hair white as snow, and ice blue eyes? That Scaddy? We've met. Karama guffawed openly. Met, he says. As I recall, it was a fair bit more than that. Naruto coughed into a fist again this time to hide his burning flush. The Lady of the Hunt had proven rather persistent, for a frost giant. Almost frightfully so. He'd never met a woman more determined in his first life or his second, nor more beautiful. Try as he might, he just didn't know how to deal with someone like that. Surely she wouldn't think to search for him here in Smartelheim. No, surely not. He'd be in and out again before she so much as got a whiff of him. Don't give me that. You're fond of her, wouldn't be healed her old man if you weren't. Small wonder she's after your hand. Much to Odin's chagrin. Karama laughed at him. Chagrin. Was it? I believe he said the two of you would make beautiful children together. Only because Skadi turned him down, first. Freya had harsh words for him after that. Can we get back on topic, here? Sindri's voice plucked him from his musings. What I'm asking is. Well. You can heal people, can't you? His face closed down. No, I can't. Yes, you can. Sindri remained unmovable as a stone. I've seen you do it before. Blue eyes flashed red. When? Sindri stepped back, balking beneath his now slitted gaze. Err, Midgard. You helped a sick wolf. He rocked back on his heels. Gah. That was a closely guarded secret. How'd the little devil find out? Realm hopping, of course. How else? Blasted dwarves. I can. He admitted after a moment's pause. Provided I get to them within a timely manner. How timely? Nosy little dwarf. Very. Naruto frowned. Very. I can't bring back the dead. And just as well he couldn't. Odin wouldn't let him out of his sight if he could. Is there a point to this? My brother, Sindri stole a quick glance toward the closed door, as though he half expected Brock to come bursting through the damn thing at any given moment, then glanced back to him. He's been taking risks lately. Doing foolish things. Might have something to do with all the silver he's touching. It's already turned him blue, but the other day he almost. Sindri. All right, all right. I need a favor, your ah, godliness. 
He was going to regret this, wasn't he? Still, nothing ventured, nothing gained. He waved him on. If anything happens to him, Sindri wrung his gloved hands together fretfully, if he gets hurt, promise me you'll help him. Do that and I'll make anything you want, whenever you want it. Free of charge. We might bicker, even fight at times, but he's my brother. And I can't bear the idea of living without him. I know that sounds cowardly, stupid even. But you have to understand. Stop. Naruto held up a hand to silence him. He didn't want to admit just how much the words had touched him. There's nothing wrong with worrying about family. I've got brothers of my own. He hardly squabbled with Tyr and Thor the way the Huldra brothers bickered, but he wouldn't want any harm to come to them, either. No need to explain that, not to me. What about you? The dwarf's bearded mug twitched. What about me? If you get hurt in the future, it seemed an obvious question. Do you want me to heal you, too? No, no, much to his alarm, Sindri shook his head. I don't matter. Brock does. If worst comes to worse, I'm sure you'll define without me. He wouldn't, he'd seen folks lose siblings before. A certain Uchiha came to mind, it was not an experience he cared to repeat. That is an alarming lack of self worth. We'll need to work on that, going forward. I mean it. An edge crept into Sindri's voice as she stared him down. I don't know what lies ahead, but if you ever have to choose between saving him or me. No, Sindri recoiled. No, it means no, Naruto shook his head, stifling further protests. If you're acting for my help, then I won't choose between either of you. Our agreement will extend to the both of you although I'll keep an extra close eye on, O.L. Brock all the same. There will be no arguments. He bit the last word out, running a hand through his messy hair. But tell your brother to be more careful going forward. Not just around the forge, but in general. Life is a precious thing. Don't go wasting it. I. All right. Sindri faltered, then rallied. I'll do that. So long as he understood. See that you do. Want to shake on it? Sindri eyed his bare hand, offered halfway now. Begging your pardon, but I'd rather not. I don't know where that thing's been, URK. Naruto reached the rest of the way to clasp his hand. The dwarf gave up and shook his palm. Though not before muttering about needing new gloves. It's a promise, then. He managed a small, tremulous smile. You'll keep your word, won't you? A touch of Naruto's old Acer blood stirred in him. I never go back on my word, dwarf. Of that, I have little doubt. Oi, Brock's voice bounced off the door, muffled by distance. If you's two slack jaws are done jabbering in there, I need help over here. Sindri scarpered out the door. Naruto didn't miss the spring in his step, coming, coming. Naruto trailed after him at a sedate pace, letting the distant clamor of the dwarves wash over him. He found it oddly peaceful. To be so consumed by the desire to create something to protect someone that you lost sight of everything else in front of you, well, truly, he envied the dwarves their single minded work. The hell were ya talking about anyway? Brock asked. Sindri intervened quickly, bless his worrying heart, just ingredients. Speak in a which project like this needs some quality scap slag. Might have to get our hands dirty. Sindri gagged. Oh gods, I'm gonna be sick. Naruto smiled as their banter carried on to into the inane. He didn't miss their smiles. At the end of the day, you didn't choose your family, family chose you. I'll leave you to be. See you soon. Another day, another disaster averted. Naruto cracked his neck as he emerged from the realm gate. He barely paid mind to those he passed. More than a few Asgardians bowed his way. Others shouted his name and he waved half heartedly to those in return but his thoughts had already turned inward. His feet carried him forward on an unerring path home. He was glad to put Svartalheim behind him, glad to have commissioned the Huldra brothers while he the chance, glad to be one step closer toward his penultimate goal in securing peace for the realms. Now it was just a matter of waiting. Brock and Sindri hadn't said how long it would take and the list of ingredients he'd given them were. Extensive. Could be days. Weeks. Months. He didn't think it would take a year, but then again, time was always funny up here in Asgard. Dwarves were nearly as ornery as the Acer themselves come to think of it, but he enjoyed their bluntness. No subtle words or veiled threats to worry about, no pesky Heimdall to eye for fear of the bastard trying to stick a dagger in his back, just good, simple conversation. It had felt. Well, 
wonderful to speak his mind for the first time in a while. Or perhaps that was just Sindri and Brock. He really didn't know any other people of such size to speak of. Uncle Balder, belatedly, he realized where his feet had carried him. He'd made it back to the lodge all right, but in his haste to return home, he'd forgotten something. Or rather, someone. Whoa! He had all of an instant to plant his feet, open his arms, and brace himself for impact. Even then he nearly found himself bowled clean off his feet as a bright blur cannon into his legs. He reeled backward as his back hit a wall the impact of which drove a short pained laugh from his lips. Aha! He looked down to the little bundle of joy in his arms, there's my favorite niece. A merry giggle answered him, I'm your only niece, silly. He tousled her bright hair. Why, so you are. Say what you would about children being rambunctious but little Thrud was strong. Far stronger than any child her age should be. Only seven years old and she already packed a punch. He supposed that was testament to her parentage. Damn girl was gonna be powerful when she grew up. Hopefully he'd be around to see it. You just missed Uncle Tear. She raised her arm, and he glimpsed a silver, round discus of metal there, inscribed with foreign runes. He got me a shield. Sounded like something Tyr would do. Always on the move, that one. And where did he go? Her little face screwed up, trying to remember. Um, he said something about Alf. Dot Alf. Alfheim. That, she bobbed her head in agreement. He said the dark elves and the light were being icky again, and he wanted to put a stop to it. That sounded just like him. The ghost of a grin touched dimpled his face. I very much doubt he used the word icky. Little Thrud huffed. I can't understand being words, okay. Sides, it's not important, he always gets me the best toys, that's what matters. Only because he traveled to all the best places. Well, if he's your favorite, then I guess you won't be needing the gift I got you. Her eyes widened. Gift? Yup. Naruto mussed the wild mane of her hair one last time and plucked another pouch from his belt. Fresh sweets from Svartalheim, but if you don't want them. I do. I do. She hopped in place, little arms reaching, grabbing, fall just short. I want, best uncle ever, please, please, please. He held it just out of reach. Better than tear? Way better. Thada girl. He let the bag drop. It fell right into her hands. Said sweets were massacred in short order. Speaking of which, it's awfully quiet in here. Where's your mother? Mommy and daddy had another fight. Thrud said between bites she's sleeping ouch and your brothers midgard she chirruped happily they're looking for someone with grandma freya trying to prove themselves to daddy again were they there wasn't anything worth finding down in midgard dot was there well isn't that nice any idea who that might be m her little head bobbed the norns his smile soured i see irksome witches on that they were in agreement he and Kurama had some tangential knowledge of the trio. Enough to know that they didn't care a fig for what they said or thought. Sadly the same couldn't be said of their, mother, in this lifetime. Freya wasn't quite so obsessed with the notion of prophecy as Odin but she was concerned with him. He couldn't count the number of times she'd tried to keep him from harm in the past. All because these so-called, Norns, had said that, Balder, would die a needless death. Pa, what did they know? that could mean any number of things. For instance, from a certain point of view, Balder was already dead. He might have adopted the namesake, but he still clung to his previous identity. From the moment Odin had called his soul into this new, stronger body, the real, Balder, may as well have ceased to exist. There was no destiny. No grand design. No script. Only the choices he made. He had chosen to accept Odin's offer. He chose to grow up here. He decided to use his influence to make things better, not just for Asgard, but all of the Nine Realms. And if he was to die someday, Hell would have only him and Kurama, when she earned them. Not before, not after. He died more times than he could count in his first life. He didn't fear death. If by some foul miracle they did die well. The solution was simple. They'd claw their way out the underworld, bonk Hell over the head and come right back to Asgard, whether she liked it or not. He did, however, dislike the idea of the Norns twisting his mother's paranoia into ugly knots. Time and time again she'd to visit them. Time and again there, prophecy, remained unchanged. 
made him want to go down there and knock some sense into them, it did. See if they saw that coming. Which begged the question, why on earth were Magni and Modi accompanying her this time? Did Odin fear she would run off if he left her alone? Possibly. Or did they simply want to know their own fates and were using her as an excuse? Bloody boys were obsessed with inheriting Thor's hammer. He'd have to ask old man Mimir the next time he saw him. Thrud's tiny hand tugged at his tattooed arm, drawing him out of his bleak reverie. Uncle? Enough about your brothers and the Norns. He patted her cheek, they're pricks. His brother's daughter blinked up at him, guileless as ever. What's a prick? A hand settled upon his back. Yes, Balder, a familiar voice crooned just behind his ear with silken menace. What indeed? He looked over his shoulder and stared into eyes colder than Fimblewinter itself. Oh, he seif. Didn't know you were up from your nap. I am. Her voice radiated saccharine sweetness. And I'll thank you to watch your mouth around my daughter, Balder. Was just an accident, ya yeah, no. He brushed her off and stood. No need for the knives to come out. My husband said something similar. Naruto's smile thinned. Heard the two of you had another fight. Did you, now? Her gaze sought Thrud, only for her daughter to look elsewhere. That's not your concern. Of course it's my concern. We're family, aren't we? Seif planted a fist on her hip and glared his way. Thor was a right lucky bastard to have a wife like her. Sure she could be a little scary at times, but at the end of the day she was a good woman and doing her damnedest to be a better mom. If not necessarily for her sons, then for Thrud's sake and those to come. Having a daughter had done much to mellow her out over the years. Better to see her like this can carrying another bun in the oven. A pregnant Seif was a scary Seif. Almost made him wonder what a pregnant Valkyrie would be like. Dot and dread the day he became a parent himself. Balder. You're spacing out again. Am I? He looked back to her, absently patting Thrud's head. Sorry. Speaking of sorry, you might want to have a word with Heimdall. Some of the ice thawed from her eyes. He was looking for you. Looking for trouble more like. Where is he? With the All Father. Her tone said it all. As did her slight smile. I heard you knocked him into Asgard's wall. I may have. Thrud cooed. That was you? It was so loud. Was it? He hadn't really paid attention at the time. Humiliating Heimdall had become something of a weekly exercise for him, if not daily. So much so that he hardly ranked their encounters. Why focus on that vicious little prick when his time could be better spent elsewhere with GNA and the Valkyries? Come to think of it, he'd promised tonight to wrist and mist. You've got that look in your eye again. Seif batted his arm. Stop that. You're setting an absolutely horrid example for your niece. Tell you what, he winked her way, Thrudy can do the same when I've got rugrats of my own running around. Thrud perked up. I can? Wait, does that mean I'll have cousins? Seif paused. What are you implying? You're our resident diplomat. Naruto slipped between them with a merry hum, not trusting himself to hold his tongue. Best not to give the surprise away. Be diplomatic and figure it out. She shouted at his retreating back. That's not what that word means and you know it. La la la. Can't hear you, his peace said. The reborn Acer sauntered away before Seif could speak further. His smile didn't last long in her absence. He'd had his fun now, no point in putting this off any longer. Odin's chambers weren't far from the lodge, rather, they were just underneath it. Right around the corner really. A hop, skip and a jump and he was there. He almost wished they weren't. If only for more time to gather his thoughts. Well, no time like the present, he approached the door at a brisk pace. A faint noise reached his ears from within, rising through the worn wood. Well, well. Two guesses as to who's already in there, first two don't count. His stride slowed, paused entirely now, as he heard words muffled through the wood, with but a thought and a wave of the hand, he concealed his presence. From there, here set one ear to the door and listened. He broke my nose, that was undoubtedly Heimdall in there, stirring up trouble again, didn't he have anything better to do? E.H. Odin's voice radiated amusement, you're alive, aren't you? walk if off already. Heimdall raged. All father, he means to do the same to you, or worse. And yet he's made no moves against me. Odin's retort was crisp, measured even. This isn't the first time you've accused him of such, Heim. 
The pause that followed was ominous indeed. One might think you're lying to me. Have you lost your touch? Oh, of course not. Good. We wouldn't want any misunderstandings now, would we? You favor him. Heimdall's voice rang with accusation. Why? He drinks and eats and whores himself out to any woman that's willing. Why keep such a creature close to you? Why? A patient, albeit parental, sigh answered him. You want to know why? Fine. I'll humor you. Because I'm the one that brought him here. Because he's my son. Because he's my successor. The people love him, and his reputation is my reputation. Do you have any idea of the power he possesses? Heimdall scoffed. He charms others with his silver tongue and his strength. What more is there to understand? Naruto nearly laughed. No, that lone word silenced him through the door. He's a talker like me, sure, but unlike me, he could squash you like a gnat, and you wouldn't be able to do a thing about it. Ha! Huh. He could match Surtur himself. Yet for all that, he's on my side. Our side. Even his children, my grandchildren, will be the stuff of legends. Powerful beyond measure. Just think. Years from now. Imagine how well prepared we might be with more of him running around come Ragnarok. As far as I'm concerned, he can bed whomever he pleases. Any child of his will strengthen our ranks. Unless. Your constant antagonizing will ruin that. I won't have it, you understand? Naruto bit his tongue until it bled. And what have you done for me recently, Heimdall? Come. You haven't been the one amassing knowledge for me, making allies for us, he has. Thanks to him, the secrets of Utenheim are nearly in my grasp. And you? You've been here. In Asgard. Putting your recent, ah, incursion to Vanaheim last month aside, which, need I remind you, ended with Freyr sending you home with your tail tucked between your legs. Well. You've been less than useful as of late. I have served you faithfully in all things, all father. Such slavish devotion. It made him sick. I beg of you, do not doubt me. I don't doubt you, Heim. Maybe if you spent less time trying to find threats where there are none and more time bettering yourself, we wouldn't be be having this conversation. A strangled snarl answered. For the love of. Listen to me, sure enough, Odin adopted a conciliatory tone. I can see you're worked up about this. But if Balder wanted you dead, you'd be dead. Like everyone else who's ever gotten in his way. He could just imagine him waving a hand at him, not looking up from his desk. Now get out of here. I have work to do, and I'm sure Baldur's tired of eavesdropping. Dismissed. What? I didn't hear him that was his cue. Naruto placed both hands against the door and flung it open. He took dark relish in the brief flicker of surprise that flitted across Heimdall's face. You heard him. Dismissed. Baldur. Heimdall's wild violet eyes glared hatefully into his serene blue orbs. Ah, if looks could kill. Well, he'd be a smoldering pile of ashes on the floor and they'd not be having this conversation now, wouldn't they? But his glare, however furious, could not and they both knew it. Odin made a shooing motion. Go on, now. Get, I need to talk to my boy, alone. Heimdall barged past, trying to smash him aside with one shoulder. Naruto made way, grinned when the sullen acer tried to hit him anyway, and tripped him before he could react. The bearer of Yalurhan face planted into the wall with an awful crunch, further mangling his nose. A none too gentle shove sent him stumbling out the doors on all fours, which summarily closed on his sprawled form. There. Now what did you Odin held up a finger? Waited until the angry Acer seemingly departed. Another moment more. Sighed, now. I know you're still there, Heimdall. Silence reigned. Naruto chuckled into it. Want me to shave you bald again? An angry snarl echoed behind the door, punctuated by a slam. Footsteps stalked away. This time there could be no denying his departure. Only then did a crooked grin tug at the corner of Odin's mouth. You're a vicious little shit when you wanna be, you know that? Naruto planted both hands in his pockets. I learned from the best. Ha! Huh. The All-Father clapped him on the back. So you did. How was your trip? He couldn't be sure if it was a trap or not. Maybe a test. Best to run with the story he'd crafted and hope for the best. Better, now that their world mill's finally up and running, he ran with his given excuse. Svartalheim will prosper thanks to that. Odin pulled a face. Will it, now, dad? No, he drew him back before he could reach for one of his ravens. You promised to let me handle this. 
Marching an army down there will only make you more enemies. We have enough of those. Give it time. Let them see you for who you really are. Monster. Coward. Killer. But he didn't need to know that. Odin planted a hand on his desk and looked away. Time's in short supply these days, Balder. He lifted his chin to stare him down, then we'll make more. Odin's good eye met his neither moved. Not for the first time, Naruto wanted to give the All Father a good hard shake. In many ways Odin could be like a child at times. His first instinct was to destroy anything or anyone who dared oppose him. Often, but not always. Other times he could be clever. Subtle insidious. It often fell to him and Mimir to protect the man from himself. And if they couldn't? Well. Sometimes you had to put old dogs down. Time would tell if it came to that. And besides, he'd heard every bit of his conversation with Heimdall. Make weapons of my future children, will you? I don't think so. When if? Ragnarok came about, any heirs of his would fight because they chose to, not because they'd been gaslit into it by their mad grandfather. You're right, you're right. Beneath his glare, the elder god yielded with a sigh he didn't entirely trust. I just worry sometimes. Come here, he beckoned him to the desk. I want to show you something. A blonde brow rose. And what might that be? What, would you rather spend the rest of the day pummeling Heimdall? His brow crept higher still. Odin laughed. All right, all right, stupid question. Here, have a look at this, will you? He circled over to the man's desk and found himself looking at a mask, an old, broken, wooden thing, carved with runes he couldn't comprehend. Odin waved a hand at it. He picked it up. No response. Though it hummed under his touch, the runes did not glow. The mask remained inert. It was not meant for him. You're aware of Ragnarok? HMHMM. He tilted the mask end over end, trying to get a better look at it. It starts after Fimblewinter, which begins when I die. Karama bridled. You won't die, I'll not let it happen. Don't worry, I'm in no hurry to kick the bucket. Odin tutted, blissfully unaware of their inner dialogue. Awfully blasé to talk about your own death. Even for you. Mom's busy with the Norns. She won't mind. Your secret is safe with me. Not even a hint of surprise on the Ravenpecker's face. Odin knew where she was, then which implied he'd been the one to send Magni and Modi with her. Even gods don't live forever, boy. True. He set the wooden mask down with a sigh. Reckon I've got a few hundred years until I'm anywhere near old enough to kick the bucket. Pratt. Odin nudged him with an elbow. That mask there is the key to preventing all this, to averting Ragnarok. With it, we can finally look into the abyss. Have our answers. You're talking about that crack in the world, down in your cellar. I am. The All Father slung an arm around his shoulders. It's not a sin to crave knowledge, son. We all want to know our place in the world. There's nothing wrong with that. Mortals find meaning in praying to us, and perhaps there is, at the end of the day. But you and I? Where do gods or demigods go when we die? What does it all mean? That's the answer I seek. Answers he likely wouldn't find, but that was his battle to lose. Dot you say that now? his brow furrowed, but I've seen what too much of one thing does to a man. That's what I've got you for. Odi tousled his hair as he hadn't done in years, to keep me on the straight and narrow. You're my best tracker, after all. One that hadn't done his bidding for ages, but how was he to know that? He could do it. Right here. Right now. They were alone. Just shove his fist through Odin's chest and squeeze. Any threat he ever was and would be. Killing him was certainly an option, but he wanted to help him. The All Father could be so much better, if his paranoia and thirst for knowledge didn't outweigh his wisdom. Maybe once he had his answers he'd finally man up and start acting to the father and grandfather he was meant to be. And if he didn't, well, he'd burn that bridge when they came to it. All right, he shook his arm off, so long as your quest doesn't consume you, I'm in. Good, good, your brother was asking after you, by the way. Naruto found himself perking up despite his best efforts, you mean Tyr? Odin made a face. Not that preachy stiff. Honestly, he's useless. He can stay in Alfheim for all I care. There it was again. The casual disparagement. Unbidden, he recalled Sif's words. Thor, then, is he drinking again? 
Define drinking. A distant crash rattled the whole of Asgard. So that's a yes. All right, you want me to drag him out of his cups? Odin clapped his shoulder. If you wouldn't mind, I need him somewhat sober today. Sober for what? Don't you worry about that. Just snap him out of it. He did. He worried very much. Fine, but I want Ingrid in exchange. The All Father quirked a graying brow. Don't you already have a weapon? I thought you liked Skofnung. I do. He patted the inert hilt wrapped in his belt, a silent reminder of another task that needed doing. Needed to tend to those spectral berserkers with Mimir. But for now, he had a brother to save and a bargain to make. Most weapons aren't sentient. Fine, fine. He capitulated at last. She's no loss. Just, be careful, from what I've heard, your brother's on a right bender. He found her in the study, just as before, bound by a magical cord to that infernal wooden pillar, the poor sword couldn't move, even now. She started struggling the moment she saw him, just as always, trying to get to him to freedom. Time and time again he'd thought about breaking the poor girl out, only to refrain under Odin's watchful gaze. He'd avoided antagonizing him for so long, but here, now he had the perfect chance. She'd been here for as long as he could remember. He didn't even know who her original owner was, save that it wasn't Odin. The old man always got awfully embarrassed whenever he brought the subject up. None of that mattered now. Sure, the Huldra brothers had agreed to forge him three things, but in his experience one could never have too many weapons. Or armor. And besides, he rather liked his little talks. In many ways her consciousness reminded him of a small child. Which made her captivity all the more distressing. You didn't tie a kid to a pillar. Hey, sweetheart. He ran a hand over her trembling hilt. Still here, E.H. Ingrid chimed mournfully. And his heart went out to her. Wanna get out of here? She perked up, all but vibrating in place. I'll take that as a yes, then. Yes, yes, yes. Her words rushed his mind in a series of happy chirps he could barely understand. Sentience to be sure, but not fully grown. Definitely didn't feel right to leave her like this. All right, all right, hold still. He flicked a knife out and set her free. She shot upright, bobbed in the air with a merry cry, then cut circles around him, humming happily, freedom. He held out her sheath, given to him freely, hop on in. Ingrid all but leapt into his grasp. Thank you, you're welcome. Karama grumbled deep inside him, and just like that we've picked up another stray. He slung her over his shoulder with a rueful smile. Hope you don't mind noise. It's gonna be rowdy where we're going. The boy was false. Heimdall knew he was, just as he had known for years now. He knew even now, as he watched him stalk through the streets of Asgard. So the All Father had given him that sword, had he? No matter. It changed nothing. One look was all it took to read his mind. To know the dark designs within. He was not of this world, no matter what he might claim. He held no loyalty to Asgard. Likewise, he cared more for the other realms than their own. He was false. A fake, a fraud, a trickster who was loved by all, but only because they failed to see the real him. Time after time he had tried to warn the All Father. Time and again his warnings had been dismissed. He would not be deceived, not like the others, no matter what he said or did. But Heimdall knew, he knew, it was just a matter of proving it. They would find a way, somewhere, somehow, he would destroy him. Black Thunder was a fine mead hall, named after the god of thunder himself there was no better place to drink in all of Asgard. Really. Everyone gathered here when they wanted to cut loose. Be it Asgardians, Einhergiar, Valkyries, even the gods themselves. Most thought of it as a Valhalla away from Valhalla for all manner of revelry could be found here. Many a man and woman were busy drinking, reveling, or in some cases, outright fornicating in some of the darkened corners, heedless of anyone or anything or anybody at all. And why not? It was a time of peace best to make merry and all that. If they kept at it like that, Asgard might have some new warriors running around in the coming year. The bouncer took one look at him and Ingrid, grunted, then summarily waved them through without checking them. Youngsters might have to drop their weapons on the table with the rest, but not the sons of Odin. Godly privilege and all that. Crowds parted before him as he threaded his way deeper into the mess. Hands clapped his back. Warriors chanted his name. 
Nor was he the only one here. He spied more than a few unmasked Valkyries among the Gladden throng. GNA was arm wrestling a brute twice her size and winning handily for it. While Hildur danced drunkenly atop atop a table, golden braid swaying with her hip, wings drooping, a tankard in each hand as warriors cheered her on. He even spied young Iyer near the entrance, patching up a poor bastard who'd had one too many and bashed his head on a table. Not one of the Einhergiar, but a mortal at that. Bless her heart. But they weren't his goal, and so he pressed on. His patience was rewarded soon enough, though he wished it soon wasn't. Sure enough he found Thor in the middle of it all, hunched over a table with tankard in hand. Right where I thought you'd be. He plonked down on the seat beside him. Had a bit of a rough day, did we? Balder. Bleary blue eyes blinked up at him. What are you doing in here? You shouldn't be here. Yet here I am. He spread his arms. What are you doing? Thor glowered at his mug. Drinking. I can see that. Might I ask why? Thor ignored him. He tugged at his arm. We should get going. Up came the flagon. Down it slammed. Thor grabbed another from a passing server. Naruto felt the beginnings of a grimace tugged at his whiskered face. Come on, big brother, don't do this. It's already done. Thor thumped another tanker down and the mead hall fell silent around him. Let it be known that the god of thunder is good for two things. His words boomed out, hearkening to all. Killing giants, and pissing mead. Anyone who disagrees. His hammer thumped down on the table beside him will greet Mjolnir with his face. Damn it, he really was in his cups, wasn't he? Best try for the gentle approach. Thor. This isn't you. Why don't we talk? A low growl pierced the space between him. Quiet. Done too much talking today already. Don't get mad. He was drunk. Not his fault. Listen, I'm here for you. Anger flashed across his face. I said quiet, runt. I am not a runt. Naruto took the insult in stride, I am your brother and. A full mug of mead splashed across his face. Ale trickled down it to stain his blue tunic and ruin his new boots. Ingrid squawked indignantly in her sheath, having been thoroughly doused as well. Huh. Strong stuff. A mortal would have been soused on the spot. As an acer, he barely felt the buzz. All around them, the mead hall went silent. Naruto took a deep breath, swallowed. Dot and wiped his face with the back of his hand. I'm going to pretend you didn't do that. Exasperated sighs and groans went up from the mortals, gods, and Valkyries alike. They'd expected a fight. Pity they weren't going to get one. Where's the fire in Yaw? Thor must have realized it too, because he harumped and shook his now empty mug his way. You've been hanging around with Tyr too much. You used to love fighting. You were always good for a scrap. He sighed. I still do and I still am. The god of thunder sulked. Got a funny way of showing it. Ingrid peeked out her sheath and trilled Thor's way. Rude man. You're mean. Huh? Thor couldn't understand her language, but he heard the noise all the same. Is that who I think it is? When do you get her? Just today. He, Balder. A bleary grin stretched across his brother's face. I've got an idea. Wanna see which is stronger? Your sword or my hammer? Mjolnir perked up on the table. Ingrid tried to wriggle out her sheath completely. No, 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 Naruto pushed them both down. We are not doing this. Aren't we? A stray Einherjar made to sit down beside them as he spoke. Thor snapped his fingers without so much as a glance and Mjolnir swept up, obliterating the woman's head. A burly hand shoved her corpse off the bench and sent it flopping to the floor. Seats taken. Buzz off. Naruto sighed. Was that really necessary? In Harriar can die all they like. Ain't like they stay dead. She'll be good as new by tomorrow. That doesn't mean you can just walk around caving their heads in. Why not? You won't let me kill any more giants, for good reason. Enough talking. Thor raised his tankard of mead and drank deeply, er thinking too much again, little brother. Naruto slammed a hand down atop it, and you not enough, you said you'd stop this. Sparking blue eyes met his. I did stop. Now I'm starting again. Sif's fault. Dot you too had another argument again. Thor tore his arm free and kept drinking, she told you. Your daughter did. A bleary grin. Ah, fruity. She's got a good head on her shoulders. 
smarter than her old man. He lifted his mug to drink again. Naruto swatted it out his hand with a lazy backhand. It flew across the mead hall, bounced once, and shattered. The Einherjar fell silent. Thor growled and lurched to his feet. Listen, you. No, he grabbed him by the beard. You listen to me, look, I get it. You screwed up. But you can be better than this. You have to be. Think about little Thrud. Easy for you to say. You're the favorite. You ain't a father. Thor glowered down at his hands. He could still see hints of dried blood on them from some endeavor or another. You don't know what it's like. Yes, yes he did. And he wanted to punch him so damn hard for making him think of Odin right now. But doing that wouldn't change anything. Everyone was watching them, waiting for their argument to dissolve into an brawl. One he wasn't in the mood for. A fight here would drag everyone else in, mortals, Acer, and Valkyries alike. And then where would they be? Hungover and regretting their decisions. No, instead, he released his brother's beard and shoved him back, but I'm about to. That sobered Thor right up. The hell you say? Well, Naruto scratched the back of his head. Apparently Valkyries can bear children after all. Who knew? Not him. I may have been a bit overeager. No way. Thor shook his head, drunkenly defiant. Can't be true. Er messing with me. Gotta be. A faint rustle of feathers was his only warning. Then Naruto felt Ni's arms encircle his waist from behind, her body spooning up against his back. Her heavy wings encircled him protectively, her chin came down upon his shoulder as he glimpsed a smile on her dark face, bright golden eyes dancing with mirth, her triumph thinly veiled and exultant. He speaks truly, I carry his child, as do. Shish. He reached around to clamp a hand over her mouth. Don't go spilling that bit just yet. Sue. Thor blinked at the Valkyrie, he blinked hard, I'm gonna be an uncle? GNA preened like the proud mother to be she was, you are indeed. Naruto sighed, that's the part you take away from this? Thor continued to stare at the two of them. Naruto sighed and took his hand from the Valkyrie's mouth. Yes, you're gonna be an uncle. GNA laughed into his shoulder, body quivering with mirth, he reached around and tweaked her hindquarters for it, she kept right on laughing insufferable girl. Ha! Thor burst to his feet, nearly fell over, then righted himself on a table. This calls for a celebration. He flung his mug backward with a roar. Everyone, drink and make merry. Clonk! All eyes turned toward the sound. Ire, sweet gentle Ire, righted herself with a growl. A pale hand rubbed her forehead, patient forgotten at her feet. That. Hurt. Thor had the good grace to blanch in the face of her fury, if only a little. Erm. Sorry about that. Too little, too late. The Valkyrie kicked the mug away and dove at him. You will be. Ha. Huh. He grabbed her and smashed her through a bench. A fight with a Valkyrie. How I've missed this. Neither saw said shards of said table wing away to strike an unwitting Einherjiar in the ass. Said warrior yelped, fell over and crashed into three of his fellows causing them to spill their mead and ruin their meal. Angry accusations were thrown. Harsh words exchanged. Bodies were shoved and oaths of drunken vengeance sworn, which in turn jostled yet more bodies, and, well, it was the straw that broke the camel's back, domino effect at its finest. In hindsight, Naruto never knew who threw the first punch, only that someone did, which in turn drew a shout, and the mead hall went mad. Tables flipped. Bodies hit the floor and in a matter of moments, everyone was swinging for the fences, all semblance of silence and civility forgotten. Somewhere in the madness GNA let go of his back to tackle someone away from him, and quite suddenly he found himself face to face with the same brute she'd been wrestling only minutes before. Celebrate, E.H. Screw it. Maybe Thor was right. Nothing wrong with a little brawl every one in a while. Naruto waded into the madness, fists swinging, blood upon the snow. A. N. Happy times for all, we'll get more romance next chapter. Would you like this story to be upgraded to M? Do you want this to remain a story? Yes? No? Maybe so? Make yourselves heard? Once more, we're sticking with the embers rule for this particular story, and others. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof, gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs might need a third soon.
so I barely have time to write. As such, I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up, your voice matters, make yourself heard, as ever, reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. Working nearly all hours of the day keep me absurdly busy, and I can't bring myself to write something folks don't like. On there we go. As ever, reviews keep me alive. Without them, I cannot write. So, in the immortal words of Atlas. Review. Would you kindly? And have some previews. Well, potential ones, and of course. Warning, warning, warning. Spoilers await thee, ye be warned, previews, tear. You all right, there? You're acting strange. Just thinking of the future. A heavy hand settled on his head. Look after them, won't you? You'll know when the time comes. Freya opened her hands. Do you trust me, son? Don't do it. I can't read you. Skull blinked at him. Why can't I read you? Say something? Naruto eyed her as one might a rabid squirrel. Um, hello? Yes, that? The youngest Norn thrust a finger in his face, all smiles. Do it again. This is fascinating. His ally stepped up. We wish to know, quiet, you. She flicked a hand at his companion. You I can read. You're predictable. We already know what you'll do. That's not possible. That's not possible, she sang in unison, talking over him. Not you. Gleaming golden orbs swung back to him, wide with mirth. Your choices. Unpredictable. Much to his annoyance she began to skip around him as a child might, not a young woman. Erratic. Chaotic. Her face thrust against his, forehead to forehead. Balder, yet not balder. But we don't know you, we don't know what you'll do. You're too close. He smacked her hindquarters with an open palm, desperate to force her away. Skull jolted with a yelp, clutching her flank, dot and still smiling. Lovely, I didn't see that coming, either. A hand planted itself in the wall, stepped forward, all but pressing herself against him. Ice blue eyes met his. You're a difficult man to find, Balder. He gulped. Hey, Scatty. Fancy seeing you here. Why are you laughing? Because. Naruto palmed his face. A red eye peeped through his fingers. My name, my real name, isn't Balder. I had one before this, a life long before this. If you try to take this life away from me, I'll let the monster out. Then you'll see. Just how dangerous, I really am. Papa. Mimir. You old goat, what are you up to this time? Dot you haven't heard? Someone made off with Thor's hammer in his sleep? The lady of the forge beckoned silently. I don't understand. Naruto tamped down the uncertainty in his chest and stared at her. I already gave her more of my blood for the damn weapon. What more does she need? Brock coughed into a fist and grinned ruefully around it. She, er, wants you in the water, with her. Oh, oh, realization dawned. His face reddened. Good thing I can hold my breath. You and mermaids. Dot ah. Uh. Karama groaned in his head. I hate getting wet. Ingrid trilled indignantly in her sheath. Here, lad. Watch this. Mimir. I really wouldn't recommend T H A N D. He fell of the cliff. He leapt after him with a sigh. Ha ha. There they are. There's my nieces. Come here. Give me a hug. Burly arms closed around the twins, there was no escape. The youngest growled. Uncle Thor, no, not again. Put me down, damn it. You're messing up my hair, Naruto smiled in the background. Honestly, I liked you better as a drunk, we must be better. You said family comes first, she jumped him. You don't talk, you don't think, I think, you kill. It's a simple concept. You look tired, little brother. Naruto felt tired after the night he'd had. His throat was dry, he was missing a boot, his head ached and his body was deliciously sore in a way that suggested either a good fight or a good heart. Well, a shorter and far more enjoyable word that began with the letter. F. Dimly, he became aware of being sprawled out in a bed probably not his, and a hand nudging him back to wakefulness. He flailed around with one arm, frowned now when he found the bed empty. Tired, he says. I had one hell of a night. Where's? GNA and Hilder woke before you, Balder. The same, placid voice informed him. Rise and shine. 
you've been asleep for two days. Had he and Thor partied that hard? Ugh. He didn't remember anything after the brawl in Black Thunder. Don't wanna. Someone waved a plate of eggs and toast beneath his nose, he knew them by their smell. Never mind. I take it back. He creaked a sleep gummed eye open, only to groan and close it again when sunlight slashed at his face. Is that really you, Tear? In the flesh. Eat slowly, now. He was going to have to open his eyes, wasn't he? Naruto heaved a sigh and as he was bathed, his half-brother pressed a tankard of water into his hand and he guzzled it greedily. From there it only took him a few moments to polish off breakfast. Only then did he raise the plate and likewise, his gaze to meet his savior. Sure enough, a bemused tear smiled back at him, better? Brings you back? No, never mind that. He climbed to his feet and stifled a yawn with the back of his hand. How was Alfheim? Tear's face said it all, even if his golden bifrost eyes didn't, that bad? The god of war shrugged with one shoulder. For a time I thought I would succeed, but, well, he heaved a sigh and looked away. Both the light and dark elves are more firmly entrenched in their ways than I thought. What I thought was an armistice proved nothing more than a ruse. Within a week, they were fighting again. And what of you? How fares our father? Has he been stirring up trouble again? Naruto winced despite himself. There was no point in lying to Tear. He longed to see the best in people, but he wasn't stupid. He certainly wasn't afraid to pick up a weapon and cut through the bullshit when the situation demanded it. Even so, he couldn't help but look away, can't say he hasn't. Balder. All right, all right, yeah. He palmed his face. He's been surly. Wanted Thor for something yesterday. Dunno what. Probably something to do with Utenheim. Again. No response came. Tear? You all right, there? You're acting strange. Just thinking of the future. A heavy hand settled on his shoulder. Look after them, won't you? A bright brow furrowed in confusion. Look after who? You'll know when the time comes. In any case, father wants to see you. That's why I'm here. Rough night, Balder? No. Dot did the bruises give it away? Naruto raised a middle finger in a sarcastic salute as he staggered into Odin's chambers. The All Father looked particularly smug about that last bit, but beckoned him forward nevertheless. Even a blind man could see that he was distracted by something. His emotions betrayed him, and his eagerness more so. A map lay sprawled over his table, one he didn't recognize. Curiosity reared its ugly head. All right, he yawned. I'm here. What do you want this time? There's a stranger in our realms, son. Well that's not so surprising. Another god. Greek. His world ground to a halt. Come again? Ha. Huh. Odin rasped out a chuckle. Got your attention there, did I? He had. The Greeks were legends, myths even Tyr had limited interactions with. Dot for good reason. Zeus and his lot were an arrogant bunch. Many of his kin claimed to be so much smarter, so much more enlightened than all others. What could possibly bring one here to their shores? Moreover. Why are you telling me this? Ingrid poked out of her sheath upon his back, trilling something similar. Because, Odin stabbed a finger into the map, they caused quite the stir before went into hiding, masked their presence shortly after their landing, they might be a scout. Or not. Naruto interjected. Or not. Odin assented with an annoyed huff. Regardless, they're up to something, and no one can find them. But you? His good eye swiveled, pinning him where he stood. You're my best tracker. You can find anyone, anything, if you put your mind to it. True. His sensing abilities and Kuramas were nigh unparalleled and second to none, but he didn't like where this was going. This sounded less like scouting and more like he was hunting this newcomer. Hunting them as one would apprise deer with full intent to bring it down. I'm hardly going to hunt down and murder another god for trespassing. Not asking you to. Odin's reply took him aback, as did his smile. Go. See what our young god is up to. Invite them to Asgard if you can and wring some answers out of them while you're at it. Dot you think they might have a way into Judenheim, don't you? It's a possibility. He didn't miss the eager note that threaded its way into Odin's voice. They may have a means of travel we haven't considered. Naruto forbore the urge to sigh. Even now Odin hadn't let go of his obsession with the giants and Ragnarok. Rather, he couldn't. Prophecy dogged the All-Father's step. He didn't see why. If this precious, prophecy, 
was to be believed, that great cataclysm was a ways off. Hundreds of years. Why fuss over something that hadn't happened yet, he simply couldn't see the appeal. And if I can't reason with our new friend, now don't you worry about that. Odin's nonchalance set off all manner of alarms in his head. What matters is the effort. Fine. His bare shoulders slumped with a sigh. Better me than Thor. I'll do it I'll find them. Odin clasped his shoulder. That's my boy, I knew you'd come around. Where did you last see them, anyway? Funny you should ask. The ghost of a smile touched the corner of Odin's mouth. It was the only warning he received. I'm sending you there right now. Naruto bridled. No, 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 don't you dare use your foul foul to drop me off in the middle of nowhere Aga. Ravens swirled around him. A-A-A-I-I-N. He fell from the sky, plunged headlong into a body of water, and came up swearing. Every time. He splashed furiously, spitting like an angry wretch. Why? Why does he always do that? Writing himself, he flooded his arms and legs with chakra and pulled himself upright. A mighty shake divested him from the worst of the water. The rest sloughed off him as he stumbled to shore. A familiar scent reached him as he walked, causing him to wrinkle his nose against it. He knew that smell. Pungent and thick, a wretched humidity in the air, the verdant tress and lush forest surrounding him. He could hear animals chattering off in the distance, broken by the cries of birds winging overhead. A brief glance at the skyline and his surroundings only served to further conform his initial concerns. Vanaheim. What in the Nine Realms was a Greek god or goddess doing in Vanaheim? Enjoying the scenery? Ingrid trilled miserably in her sheath, don't like water. Yeah, yeah. He reached back to pat her hilt. Sorry I went and got y'all wet, kiddo. Shaking the last of the river water away, he knelt and grasped some of the loamy soil, running it through his fingers. The realm of the veneer wasn't one he'd visited often, despite it being mother's home, he'd only ever been a handful of times on tasks for Odin. Usually collecting small things, relics and the like. He'd never lingered for long and now he almost wished he had. If only because he had no idea where he was or where to start. Does it matter? Just find this god and call for Huggin, he'll come. Karama had a point, he supposed. He could feel a shift in the air. Now that he knew what to look for it was a simple matter of closing his eyes, drawing on the natural energy in the air and. Aha! Golden eyes burst open, lids rimmed by orange dust. There. He saw it. Off the beaten path. Footprints. Rather than lead out of the water like this they started suddenly, leading into the jungle. He knelt to examine the tracks. They glowed a bright white gold to his sixth sense, still sparking with latent energy. Slight. Small. Whoever they were, they were young. But who could it be? Tyr hadn't been off visiting the foreign plane for quite some time, and even when he did, he never brought visitors with him when he returned. Which begged the question. How had another god found their way here? It wasn't impossible he supposed, but for them to suddenly appear, as though cast from the sky itself. Well, that made a man curious. Rolling his shoulders, he adjusted Ingrid's sheath on his back and waded into the brush. Ferns parted before him but he paid them little heed. His gaze remained fixed firmly on the footprints. They wove a winding, meandering path through the brush. A stride that bespoke of uncertainty to his certainty. Whomever they were, they were clearly disoriented. Tired. Perhaps even wounded. Blood spattered the next bush he passed. His stride lengthened, devouring the distance, abandoning all pretext of stealth. He found yet more spattered across the dirt as he followed the footprints, his heart quickened. Were they dying, bleeding out? Had something managed to hurt them? An arm looped, round his shoulders as a sword tickled his throat. Don't move. A furious voice hissed in his ear. Who are you? Did he send you? Foolish of you, Naruto. That's what you get for hyper-focusing on something. All right, all right. He sighed to Kurama as much as his captor. Let's not do anything we'd regret. Why don't we just talk this out and... He drove an elbow backward while speaking. In the same instant Ingrid burst from her sheath and smacked her hilt against their kidnapper's head. The result spoke for itself. His captor folded behind them with a pained gasp, allowing him to reach back and claim their sword for himself. Huh. Lighter than he thought. It would serve. With his free hand he snatched Ingrid out the air, brought his borrowed blade to bear, 
and laid it atop her, effectively trapping his foe's throat in a scissoring motion. The slightest twitch or movement on her part would lop her head clean off. Dot how about you don't move, missy? For he found himself looking upon a girl. Not a woman, but someone who was little more than a child, an adolescent scarcely out of their teenage years. Long dark hair framed a startled visage fro which stark green eyes, shone, her cheeks adorned with pale gold jewelry. He caught the faint glint of armor beneath her white robe and little else, because before his very eyes the poor thing started to cry. Please, wait, I beg of you, her voice rose in a plaintive plea. Mercy, I meant you no harm. His grip wavered, but he didn't let her go, dot who are you? She bit her lip but didn't look away, couldn't, with his blades holding her fast. I am Athena. She spoke at last, her voice scarcely a whisper. Goddess of wisdom. A blonde brow rose. Don't seem very wise to me, missy. Yes, well, she huffed. Today has been a rather strange day. I'm hardly in top form and I thought you were hunting me. He was. He wisely chose not to say that. You could stand to be a bit friendlier. I beg your pardon. She tried to bow her head, then thought better of it when she remembered her position. I'm afraid a trick on my Poseidon's part landed me here. Her smile soured a little as she spat his name. Or perhaps it was Hades. Blasted uncles of mine, but I suppose that's what I get for quarreling with them. Might you know the way back to Olympus? Olympus? She really was Greek, then. You're a long way from home, this is Vanaheim. May I get up then, please? Her voice warbled a little. My legs are falling asleep. Naruto released a sharp breath, dot and prayed he wouldn't regret the decision he was about to make. He lowered his blades, stabbed hers into the dirt offered her a hand, here. Athena grasped it all too happily. A, N. Didn't see that coming, did ya? Mind you, we're still a good bit out from God of War. Hence the younger Athena. Would you like this story to be upgraded to M? Do you want this to remain a story? Yes? No? Maybe so? Make yourselves heard? Once more, we're sticking with the embers rule for this particular story, and others. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof, gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs, might need a third soon, so I barely have time to write. As such, I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up, your voice matters, make yourself heard, as ever, reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. Working nearly all hours of the day keep me absurdly busy, and I can't bring myself to write something folks don't like. On there we go, as ever, reviews keep me alive, without them, I cannot write. So. In the immortal words of Atlas. Review. Would you kindly? And have some previews. Well, potential ones. And of course. Warning, warning, warning. Spoilers await thee. Ye be warned. Previews. I can't read you. Skull blinked at him. Why can't I read you? Say something. Naruto eyed her as one might a rabid squirrel. Um, hello? Yes, that? The youngest Norn thrust a finger in his face all smiles. Do it again. This is fascinating. Tear stepped up beside him. We wish to know, quiet, you. She flicked a hand at his companion. You I can read. You're predictable. We already know what you'll do. That's not possible. That's not possible, she sang in unison, talking over him. Not you. Gleaming golden orbs swung back to him, wide with mirth. Your choices. Unpredictable. Much to his annoyance she began to skip around him as a child might, not a young woman. Erratic. Chaotic. Her face thrust against his, forehead to forehead. Balder, yet not balder. But we don't know you, we don't know what you'll do. You're too close. He smacked her hindquarters with an open palm, desperate to force her away. Skull jolted with a yelp, clutching her flank, dot and still smiling. Lovely, I didn't see that coming, either. Push. GNA absolutely snarled. Tell me to push again and I'll push you out a window. Pretty sure that wouldn't kill me, I am prepared to try. All right, all right, just trying to inject a little humor into the situation. Hurry up and get this baby out of me, it's a boy. Forseti. She rasped. His name will be Forseti. 
Huh, it fits. The God of Peace fathering the God of Justice. There's some poetry there. How many children do you intend to have? Naruto grinned blearily. Yes. That's not an answer, it really is, Pops. A woman with an axe walked past him. Naruto paused. Blinked now. Hey, wait a second. I know that brand. Bright eyes flicked to his beneath flaming hair. Leave me be, Norse god. I've no interest in your quarrels. Now wait just a second, I said leave me. She sneered at him. Balder, brother of Thor. You may play the peacemaker but I know better. You're just as responsible for this as he is. Lady I have no idea what you're on about the axe swept up under his chin. One more word, and I swear I'll make you wish for death. Naruto couldn't help himself at that. Sorry? Faye smashed him into a mountain. Freya opened her hands. Do you trust me, son? Don't do it. Why are you laughing? Because. Naruto palmed his face. A red eye peeked through his fingers. My name, my real name, isn't Balder. I had one before this, a life long before this. If you try to take this life away from me, I'll let the monster out, then you'll see. Just how dangerous, I really am. Mimir, you old goat. What are you up to this time? Dot you haven't heard? Someone made off with Thor's hammer in his sleep? Hammer down. Owww. What should do that for? False god. Pretender. You shall be flayed for. Thunk. Finally, some silence. Thought they'd never shut the hell up. Papa. Look. I can fly. Wait. What do you mean you con? Ire. Come quick. Our baby girl go her wings early? Kratos. Ghost of Sparta. Do not call me that, Norse god. Hey, hey. From what I heard most of that pantheon had it coming. Most? The word was a briar, snagging at the Spartans' thoughts. What do you mean, most? Balder beamed. Met a few. Convinced him to live here. Sired a couple kids. You know how it is. Say hello to the big man, sweetie. A little girl poked her out behind the Norse god's legs and dared a timid wave. She hadn't been there a moment ago. Kratos felt his throat close. She looked so familiar, almost achingly so. What do you want? Is the boy in? I was hoping these two could play while we talk. Athena wasn't skittish. Much to Naruto's relief, the fledgling Greek goddess happily accepted his invitation to the halls of Asgard. More than that, the daughter of Zeus wasn't made nervous by the idea of being near so many foreign gods. Far from it. She seemed eager to meet them, almost worryingly so. Say what you would about Athena but she didn't have much fear in her. Perhaps that was due to her lineage. Why should she fear other deities when she was the daughter of one herself? And yet no one had come to greet them upon their return. More than a few common folk bowed to greet them as they passed, but of his fellow Acer he saw no sign. By all rights Naruto knew Athena should be concerned by that. He certainly was. Ordinarily he couldn't take two steps into Asgard without getting swarmed. Yet for all his caution, young Athena displayed none. Goddess of wisdom indeed, she wasn't displaying much of that vaunted title right now. Bah, let the lass live a little, Karama's suggestion aside, he wished he could, but Athena was his guest. Nothing could happen to her on his watch. Don't get too far ahead now, he called after her when she turned to race down the street, I don't want you running into Heimdall. Heim who? No, never mind that. This is fascinating. She rounded on him with wide eyes, hands linked behind her back. I always knew there were other pantheons, but to finally see one with my own eyes. Is it really that impressive? It is. Her head bobbed in an eager nod, setting her long hair swaying. This is how gods should lie. She gestured with a bangled arm, bracer clinking softly with the sudden movement. Among the people, Olympus is too. Dot HMM. Her lips pursed as she tried to find the word and failed. I can't think how best to put it. Gaudy. He ventured. Yes. She snapped her fingers in agreement. That, exactly that. Why have a palace in the clouds when it distances you from your subjects? Seems obvious. A blonde brow quirked in mild annoyance. To look down on everyone else. When young Athena flinched at his words, he sighed and reluctantly amended his response. You could show me around sometime when you get back to Greece. Repay today's favor. Or something like that. I could? Her face lit up, 
startling him with the purity of her smile. I mean, yes, would like that very much. You are K. Pure girl. Absolutely must protect. A low crackle of thunder across the horizon heralded a new arrival. He looked toward the clear clouds and watched them darken now, rapidly boiling their way. Well, he drawled, looks like they someone noticed us, took him long enough. Athena followed his gaze. You have a god of the skies as well? The ghost of a smile graced his face, not quite. A mighty tremor rattled the world behind him as Thor came crashing down from on high. There you are. He plodded forward, heedless of the curious sound Athena made. All father's been looking for. Dot you. Dot huh. He spied said goddess over his shoulder a heartbeat later and squinted down at her with naked curiosity. Well, I'll be damned. That her? She the stray goddess Odin was on about? Yup. Naruto smacked his lips, producing an audible pop, found her in Vanaheim. Huh. Thor blinked. Guess that's what the old man's beard in a twist. Yup. I thought she'd be bigger. Athena absolutely hissed. I beg your pardon? Careful now. Naruto thrust an arm between them before they could come to blows. Be nice. She's quicker than she looks with that sword of hers. HRMPH. Whatever you say. His half brother didn't look much convinced by his reasoning. What's she the god of, anyway? Flowers. I am the goddess of wisdom and war. Athena put in with eerie calm, and you will not speak to me that way. Ha! Thor barked a belly laugh. War? You? You couldn't find your way out of a wet paper bag. You're no match for the god of thunder. God of thunder, you say? A dangerous look danced through Athena's eyes, hinting at potential yet untapped. God of hammers, more like. The young goddess suppressed her ire a moment later and adopted a wan smile in its place. My lord father might have something to say about that. Ha! Huh. That at last got a grin from Thor. Your old man's welcome to get of his ass and try. E.H. Balder ow. Naruto ruthlessly elbowed him in the gut, drawing a grunt and a glare from the bearded brute besides. The hell was that for? I can feel that. You're being rude. Another elbow cut him off, knock it off. Nah, the bearded brute shook his head. Just be impolite. If I was being an ass, she would have met Mjolnir with her face by now. Thor. Yeah. Stop. Poking. Her. Fine, fine, spoil sport. Naruto looked to Athena, expecting the worst. As such, her giggle utterly baffled him. Thor glowered her way, not quite comprehending the reason for her mirth. What's so funny, runt? You are. She wiped a mirthful tear from the corner of her eye with a happy sigh. The both of you. At their baffled expressions she hastened to continue. I was led to believe that those of the Norse were drunken brutes and berserkers all. Little more than merry madmen who gloried in battle and little else. Hmm. Naruto quirked a brow Thor's way. I wonder who gave us that reputation. The god of thunder looked away, whistling innocently, Dunno. There it is again, Athena laughed again a soft musical melody that stirred the soul. That's precisely what I mean. Although the two of you are clearly kin, you show such kindness to one another. More than that, you listen to each other. Unlike my uncles. Another laugh shook her shoulders despite her best efforts. You do not compete with one another. Dot you tolerate one another. A pleased flush darkened her pale face. My family would do well to follow such an example. Now it was Naruto's turn to flush. The Greeks were known for having certain predilections toward one another and mortals, to say nothing of Zeus himself. There was a subject he wasn't touching with a ten-foot pole. Seeking an escape, he sought to steer the conversation to safer waters instead. In any case, now that you are here, do you have a way of betting back home? Athena's hopeful expression fell. Not at present. I doubt my absence has even been noticed yet. There it was again. It felt like he'd just kicked a puppy. A sassy sword-wielding puppy who could happily eviscerate most mortals when pressed, but a puppy nonetheless. Hey, hey, he placed a hand on her shoulder, then thought better of it when she turned damp eyes on him. I'm surely they'll come looking for you. Athena laughed again, and this time it was a bitter thing indeed. That is, sweet of you to say, but you clearly do not know my uncles as well as I my brother Ares is doubtlessly throwing a feast in my absence. He would be delighted to be rid of me. Thor raised a bushy brow, 
and I thought our family was messed up. Oh, Athena perked, as though just recalling something, but I'm sure father will notice my absence sooner or later. Left unsaid was long, later, might be. Zeus has never been the sort to ignore me. Well, let's get you settled in then, preferably before. My lord Balder, that happens, he finished with a sigh. Hey. Thor rumbled a laugh. Ya jinxed it. Athena followed their gaze, looked up now, and gasped. Naruto couldn't even bring himself to blame the fledgling goddess for her awe. He supposed it was too much to hope the GNA and the girls wouldn't take notice of his absence. Or his return. He had left suddenly after all, without so much as a word to any of them. Only natural that a few of them might be. Cross with him. The sight of nine Valkyries winging down from the heavens was something of an everyday occurrence here in Asgard. But not so for Athena. Hey, he barely managed a wave before they were upon them, all gathering, round, eager to meet the new goddess. Athena bless her soul, took their interest in stride and returned it in kind. Most would have balked when they found themselves surrounded by so many warrior women, each more than capable of rending one limb from limb. You have wings? The little goddess did not falter, on the contrary reached out to touch Iyer's wings, drawing a startled noise from the Valkyrie in question. All of you? How lovely and colorful they are. Dot may I? A wise man once said way there were two ways to win a Valkyrie's heart. One was through battle, the other, through her wings. Needless to say, Athena won them over in an instant just like that, she was in their good graces. Making friends, son? The ghost of a smile tugged at the corner of Naruto's mouth. More or less. He pivoted in place to face the newcomer, leaving Athena to be swarmed by GNA and the girls. I could say the same of you, mother. Freya tucked in her wings with a tired little smile and ran a hand through her dirty hair. She looked exhausted worn as she hadn't been before her constant visit to the norns they must have upset her again not for the first time he felt the urge to pay them a little visit and teach them a lesson maybe a few pranks would show those spinsters a thing or two should you be consorting with a greek goddess she frowned athena's way the girl barely visible in the crowd as gna and the girls fussed over her we don't know if she can be trusted so paranoid these days he'd need to nip that in the bud Mom she's lost. I found her on Odin's orders. It's not like she asked to be here. Ah. Her smile vanished completely. This your father's doing, then. I should have known. Perhaps I should have a word with him. I've known squirrels less twitchy than this woman. No need for that. Come here. Naruto bit his lip to stifle a snort then stepped in, drawing Freya into a warm embrace. Her chin came down over his shoulder as she melted into him and held tight although he didn't miss the way she frisked him over for injuries. Such a worrywart. He loved his second mother, he really did, but sometimes all her worrying worried him. Freya kept acting like she expected him to keel over at any moment. She sighed and drew back, holding him at arm's length. Forgive me, you know how I worry. And, I keep telling y'all you don't have to. Her lips pursed. What mother doesn't worry for the safety of their only child? He sensed this was going to be a sticking point for them in years to come. Listen, nothing's gonna hurt me. How do you know, oomph? Thor grunted in the background, responding to something they hadn't heard. You weren't kidding. Girls got a mean right hook on her. Naruto groaned, even as more than one Valkyries cackled at his plight. I told you not to poke her. His brother laughed. Don't worry, I'll be good and keep my eye on her. Mjolnir's honor. Well, if Thor was swearing on his hammer, Freya heaved a sigh. Go. Talk with your father. I'll make sure he keeps his promise. Sure enough, Odin was over the moon. Or maybe it was over the sun. Semantics, he supposed. In the end, Naruto couldn't blame his father for his enthusiasm. Any Greek goddess here in Asgard, even temporarily, was a veritable treasure trove of knowledge just waiting to be tapped. He hoped he wouldn't get too attached. The daughter of Zeus would be missed sooner rather than later, and he wouldn't be surprised if the Sky Father came to pay them a visit. Wonderful, wonderful. Odin clapped him on the back the moment he entered his sanctum. I knew you'd find her, of course, but I never dreamed it would be this quickly. I'll be busy for days, no, weeks with her. His brow furrowed. You make it sound like you're going to interrogate her. Perish the thought. The All Father guffawed, a rare sharp sound, 
I'm just going to ask her a few questions. She's free to do the same. Think of it as an exchange of knowledge. Ah, oh, but you? He drew him into a brisk embrace so sudden that even Naruto found himself startled for a moment. You've exceeded my expectations once again. Take some off, Balder. His good eye winked his way. You've done enough. Have some fun. Go visit Midgard with Tyr, travel the realms, enjoy yourself. Was that where Tyr had scurried off to now? He found himself tempted to join him, but a thorn of concern tugged at his heart. Be kind to Athena. She's very young. Looking for a Greek bride now, are we? Heat speared through his face. I don't know what you mean. No, Odin's grin was telling. Damn him. You seem awfully protective of her. Drop it, old man. Now, now, no need to get so defensive. Scatty could stand to have a little competition. A book winged his way and he ducked nimbly. All right, all right. I get the hint. Relax. She'll be safe with me. He made a sign with his right hand and sketched a shallow, patronizing bow. All father's honor. Naruto quirked a brow. I swear on the ravens, happy now? His brow climbed higher. Fine, fine, I swear on my good eye. Ravens, better. It was the best he'd get out of him. Good. Mind sending me to my room? I want to rest. Not at all. Odin tapped his spear against the ground, Huggin. A vortex of ravens whirled around him, and in an instant he found himself spirited away to his door. Naruto took a moment to exhale, bid Huggin farewell, and slipped inside. He felt the air shimmer as he did, just as it should. Good. No one had tried to enter since he'd last been here. His home away from home was, quite literally, the safest place in Asgard, made utterly secure by seals and all manner of traps. None could enter without his permission save Tyr. No ravens could spy upon here, no spell could slip in without his notice. It was his last bastion, his fortress, his sanctuary, his place to air his thoughts in private without fear of being discovered. A moment of silence passed, Naruto inhaled, exhaled, considered the paintings on his walls, the bed with its heavy fur blankets, the writing desk piled with papers and all manner of research. There was still so much to do, he thought he had more time before things spun out of control. Athena's arrival threatened to complicate things. Complicate them a great deal. Her presence here would doubtless draw the ire of others, which would in turn force him to accelerate his plans even further. He was prepared to deal with the Norse pantheon, but he had so little knowledge of the Greeks. Should he find Tyr? Ask him to spirit Athena back to Greece? With the Unity Stone he could. No, that wasn't fair to her. Damn it. His fist slammed down, cracking the wall. Ingrid trilled mournfully in her sheath like a worried child, your heart hurts? I'm fine, anger spent, he blew out a breath and threw himself onto his bed, just had to get that out of my system. Better out than in, I say, darn dwarves and their tricky teleporting bullshit. Naruto nearly jumped clean out his skin. Damn it, Brock, don't do that, how'd you get in here? The Azure Vulgarian shrugged. Blame the all fucker for not locking down all the paths round here. Odin likely would if he heard of this, all the more reason to keep it quiet. He scowled his way. What you want? Meh, when you got it, ya got it. The smith answered with a mysterious grin. Anyways, you ready? A blonde brow quirked in confusion. Ready for what? For the lady, ya dolt. The dwarf smacked his knee. I ain't never been myself. Sindri always got in the way, but hey. What he don't know won't kill him, eh? His voice lowered in a warning. Brock. Come on, I got a one way shortcut for ya, free of charge. Bright eyes widened. Narrowed now. He had a bad feeling about this. What ya mean a one wa? A why? Reality unfolded and he found himself lurching forward onto his hands and knees, losing what little he'd eaten this morning. Karama garbed a string of gibberish in his head. Ingrid joined the both of them with an indignant squawk. Who knew a sword could get motion sickness? No, never mind that, he had a smith to smack. Brock, he gurgled, gagged now as he wiped a line of drool from the corner of his mouth. You Sanuva bitch. Warn me next time. Where's the fun in that? The dwarf slapped his back, up and at him. Naruto staggered to his feet. In short order. He found himself surrounded by strange mountain peaks surrounding a lake he didn't recognize. 
No, that wasn't quite right. They weren't mountains, but rather the peaks of a singular one, because he and Brock were standing within it. A familiar scent trailed through his still burning nose and he inhaled to clear it. Svartelheim. Why were they back here? This way, Brock led him toward what he could only assume was some sort of viewing device in the lake. Time's a wasting. Naruto paused, looking around for good measure. No ravens, spectral or otherwise, and yet he couldn't shake the strange feeling of being watched. Quit your spocken and come on, the dwarf snapped back. We gotta be quick, don't want the all fucker realizing what we're up to. Against his better judgment, Naruto rolled his eyes and followed his unlikely ally to the strange contraption. Brock threw a lever. Strange walls came down around them, sealing them in. Each held a window of sorts. Not a periscope at all he realized. This was a lift, with but one purpose. Another twisted of the lever and the entire lift shook. Down they went into the water, descending into the darkness. A moment passed. Another, now. The descent ceased. Well. Naruto quirked a brow. Where is she? Shish. Brock brandished a bag in his hands. Here she comes. He sensed a presence a heartbeat later. A noise echoed behind him immediately thereafter. I am here. Naruto tensed as a voice echoed in his mind. Curiosity roused, he turned to face them without fear. He looked upon a mermaid. Bright golden eyes gazed back at him from a pale face framed by dark hair and a faint smile. She was a foreign creature to him, neither truly human or god, yet he found himself odd all the same. Mermaids spoke to your soul. He'd read that once in one of Odin's many, many books, but seeing feeling, as they say, was believing. Today certainly was a day of firsts for him. The lady waved a hand and touched the glass. It rippled. Parted for her now. Brock offered the bag in his hands. Rather than accept it straight away, she tilted her head. Curious. You have two souls. The second is in your stomach. Oi. I heard that. The lady of the forge accepted Brock's back. Air gusted forth from it, spilling into the water alongside bits of metal he didn't recognize. She considered them, as an artisan might her paints, then turned to them. Once more she held out her hand with intent. Brock nudged him. You know what she needs. The blood of a god. The lady of the forge beckoned silently. Fine. He bit his thumb and thrust his hand through the portal. Her hand touched his, pleasantly warm despite the depths. Red liquid trailed out, forming a familiar symbol, first that of Asgard, then of another, taking on the likeness of a leaf. She swirled a hand and bound it to the bits of metal Broke had offered her, binding it to them, forming something, shaping it. Nothein was created. I don't understand. Naruto tamped down the uncertainty in his chest and stared at her. I already gave her more of my blood for the damn weapon. What more does she need? The lady looked to Brock. Not him. Brock coughed into a fist and grinned ruefully around it. She, er, wants you in the water, with her. Oh, oh, realization dawned, his face reddened. Good thing I can hold my breath. You and mermaids. Dot I. Uh. Karama groaned in his head. I hate getting wet. Ingrid trilled indignantly in her sheath. He handed her to Broke and stepped toward the glass, once more it rippled at his touch. The water was blessedly warm, soothing even, she waved a hand and his vision cleared, allowing him to see her in her entirety. You have my blessing. The ability to see and breathe underwater. Three more gifts I have for you. She held out her right hand, revealing a trinket of deepest midnight, ringed with obsidian. One is a gauntlet, condensed into this ring. The other is a necklace that becomes a suit of impenetrable armor. And the third? I asked for, I am aware. The third is not possible. But the gift has been given, the pact sealed, and I am a woman of my word. I offer you an accord in its place. Bubbles floated past his lips as he frowned. An accord? A compromise. She elucidated for him. What might that be? She swam closer. Ran a hand over his bare chest. Lay with me. Her fingers trailed across his skin. Here and now, and from our union a child we be born. A daughter. I. Don't think that's how it works. You truly think that, don't you? A startled laugh burst from her, manifesting in a cloud of bubbles. You are so powerful, yet you know so very little of our kin. She tittered. How amusing. He recovered his wits a heartbeat later. That. Well, that's a very gracious offer. 
Yet you are nervous. She spread her arms wide, creating ripples in the water. Do you not find me attractive? I do. He did. She was beautiful in a strange, ethereal way. He'd never seen anyone like her, and he likely never would again. Sure enough, her grin grew. Your silence is the answer. Blast it, she could read his soul. Forgot about that. There really was no hiding anything from her. What do I call you? A blink, and for the first time since he'd met her, her smile vanished. Pardon? Your name. Ah. Her smile returned, this time holding a rueful edge. I cast mine aside a long time ago. In truth, I no longer remember it. If you must call me something, I suppose live will do. He knew the word well enough. Means life. Yes, she hummed happily. You know your language well, it is what I do. I create. Breathe new life into weapons and armor like yours. She tilted her head a little, hair lofting in the water. Tell me, how does this name strike you? Lovisa. He repeated it. No, she shook her head, setting her hair swaying once more. Lo, V, saw. She rolled the, oh, a little on her tongue. It means warrior. It will be the name of our child. Sound like you've got everything planned out, not everything, she pulled him closer. Her lips met his. Brock was waiting for him when he finally emerged from the late. Had fun? Quiet, you little blue voyeur. Someone else was waiting for them. A hand grasped him by his vest, pulled him out of the water, and hauled him up. It's its owner stepped forward, all but pressing herself against him. Ice blue eyes met his. You're a difficult man to find, Balder. He gulped. Hey, Scatty. Fancy seeing you here. A. N. We've got another time skip coming soon. We're getting close to God of War. Would you like this story to be upgraded to M? Do you want this to remain a story? Yes? No? Maybe so? Make yourselves heard? Once more, we're sticking with the embers rule for this particular story, and others. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, well, it will remain, but I'll not be able to continue it. I'm working two jobs might need a third soon, so I barely have time to write. As such, I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up, your voice matters, make yourself heard, as ever, reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. Working nearly all hours of the day keep me absurdly busy, and I can't bring myself to write something folks don't like. On there we go. As ever, reviews keep me alive. Without them, I cannot write. So, in the immortal words of Atlas. Review. Would you kindly? And have some previews. They're mostly the same, I'm trying hard not to spoil too many things here. Well, potential ones, and of course, warning, warning, warning. Spoilers await thee, ye be warned. Previews. Heimdall took hearty bite out of the apple. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue. No, but I'm about to tear yours out. All right, who stole Thor's hammer? You have to be safe, I won't allow you to die, so this is Greece. And yet he sensed something. Come on out, no use hiding anymore, I know you're there. A dark shape arrowed down out the clouds as Lone Falcon fluttered down and landed on his shoulder. Strong claws dug into his tunic and held fast. It tilted its head, regarding him curiously. Aha! He smiled a little. You're one of mom's? She good? A happy chirrup. Great. Give her my love. I can't read you. Skull blinked at him. Why can't I read you? Say something. Naruto eyed her as one might a rabid squirrel. Um, hello? Yes, that? The youngest Norn thrust a finger in his face, all smiles. Do it again. This is fascinating. Tear stepped up beside him. We wish to know, quiet, you. She flicked a hand at his companion. You I can read. You're predictable. We already know what you'll do. That's not possible. That's not possible, she sang in unison talking over him. Not you. Gleaming golden orbs swung back to him, wide with mirth. Your choices. Unpredictable. Much to his annoyance she began to skip around him as a child might, not a young woman. Erratic. Chaotic. Her face thrust against his, forehead to forehead. Balder, yet not Balder. But we don't know you, we don't know what you'll do. You're too close, 
he smacked her hindquarters with an open palm, desperate to force her away. Skull jolted with a yelp, clutching her flank, dot and still smiling. Lovely, I didn't see that coming, either, push. GNA absolutely snarled. Tell me to push again and I'll push you out a window. Pretty sure that wouldn't kill me, I am prepared to try. All right, all right, just trying to inject a little humor into the situation. Hurry up and get this baby out of me, it's a boy. Forsetti. She rasped. His name will be Forsetti. Huh, it fits. The god of peace fathering the god of justice. There's some poetry there. How many children do you intend to have? Naruto grinned blearily. Yes. That's not an answer, it really is, Pops. A woman with an axe walked past him. Naruto paused. Blinked now. Hey, wait a second. I know that brand. Bright eyes flicked to his beneath flaming hair. Leave me be, Norse god. I've no interest in your quarrels. Now wait just a second. I said leave me. She sneered at him. Balder, brother of Thor. You may play the peacemaker but I know better. You're just as responsible for this as he is. Lady I have no idea what you're on about the axe swept up under his chin. One more word, and I swear I'll make you wish for death. Naruto couldn't help himself at that. Sorry? Faye smashed him into a mountain. Freya opened her hands. Do you trust me, son? Don't do it. Why are you laughing? Because. Naruto palmed his face. A red eye peeked through his fingers. My name, my real name, isn't Balder. I had one before this, a life long before this. If you try to take this life away from me, I'll let the monster out, then you'll see. Just how dangerous, I really am. Mimir, you old goat. What are you up to this time? Dot you haven't heard? Someone made off with Thor's hammer in his sleep? Hammer down. Owww. What should do that for? False god, pretender, you shall be flayed for. Thunk. Finally, some silence. Thought they'd never shut the hell up. Papa, look. I can fly. Wait, what do you mean you con? Ayer, come quick. Our baby girl go her wings early? Kratos, ghost of Sparta. Do not call me that, Norse god. Hey, hey, from what I heard most of that pantheon had it coming. Most? The word was a briar, snagging at the Spartans' thoughts. What do you mean, most? Balder beamed, met a few, convinced him to live here, sired a couple kids, you know how it is. Say hello to the big man, sweetie. A little girl poked her out behind the Norse god's legs and dared a timid wave. She hadn't been there a moment ago. Kratos felt his throat close. She looked so familiar, almost achingly so. What do you want? Is the boy in? I was hoping these two could play while we talk. The door creaked open behind him. Father, who's there? Kratos rounded on them, too late. Back inside, boy. Baldur's grin only grew. Hello, Atreus. Amid the myriad of locals that constituted the Nine Realms, Svartalheim felt somewhat like the odd one out. Asgard and Midgard, despite being the homes of gods and mortals respectively, had relatively similar appearances and climates, the only difference being the presence of the Bifrost in the sky and the plethora of gods willing to change the weather on a whim. Muspelheim and Niflheim were fire and ice respectively, Alfheim was a desert or a lake depending on who currently controlled the light and Helheim was about as cold as the vacuum of space. The realm of the giants was little but mountains that scraped the sky and Vanaheim was far more an earthly paradise than the earth itself. But Svartalheim, it was a mineral-rich land where the dwarves had tunneled and mined into every somewhat hard surface to the point an accurate map would set off trypophobia with a glance. It was also the middle of summer so the lone mountain of Nidavalir was barmy enough to walk around without the furs that most Acer preferred. And yet for all of that, Naruto felt a shiver of pleasant coolness run over his bare chest at the sight of Skadi Tiazadatar. True to her Jotoner heritage, Skadi was tall, at least two inches taller than him. Her form was lithe and strong yet with no true bulk to it. Her skin was very pale with a touch of blue that one could only see on winter mornings while her hair was white as virgin snow. A pair of pupilless sky blue eyes glowed lightly in their sockets framed by a pair of dark blue tribal tattoos that branched off from her right eye up into her hairline. She had plump, pouting lips that had been painted with cobalt-colored lipstick, currently set in a sultry smile. 
Lastly of note were the two small braids she wore on either side of her head, the rest of her hair tied back in a high ponytail. The daughter of Tiazi wore a tight-fitting blue tunic edged with wolf fur, her arms bound in leather bambraces and rune-marked straps. Her long legs were clad in a pair of tight-fitting dark blue leggings tucked into furred brown riding boots, a short pelt served as a sash around her waist and a furred cloak not unlike Thor's was pinned at her shoulders. Hey, Naruto drawled out laconically, internally flip-flopping on what he felt right now. On the one hand he was over the moon to see her again, on the other hand. Brof guffawed. Sweet Nana's nethers. That has got to be the tightest pair of pants I ever saw, your moose knuckling down there missy. Naruto's hand whipped out to cuff Brock around his balding head with a smack that resounded through the mountains. Oh, on hats not how you talk to a lady. Fuck off. Brock rubbed the top of his head, giving Naruto a one-fingered salute. I know how to talk to ladies plenty well, you on the other hand, y'all acer lummox, prefer talking with your scrote. Naruto cringed, seeing Scatty raise a snowy brow at the comment before sniffing the air. Her eyes widened in surprise which quickly morphed into territorial glee. She stalked forwards with feline grace, her footfalls producing nary a sound as she went until she was directly in front of Naruto. Now that's a familiar scent, though I've never smelled it quite like the mix of an acer and something so, she circled Naruto slowly before resting her chin on his shoulder and inhaled deeply, smirking at him seductively again, rare. Naruto tingled at her touch but stepped away, only for Scatty to grab his wrist and twist him back around to face her. Uh, Brock? Now would be a good time to. Wump! Went the crass dwarf, the hint of a cackle on the air as he stepped between the realms and left Naruto to the mercies of the now grinning Scatty. Traitorous little rotter, he thought before stifling a laugh of his own as Scatty advanced on him. Uh, so what brings you to Smartleheim, Scatty? Game mostly, she said slowly advancing once again, her muse clearly set on the reincarnated Acer before her. Word has it that some rare foreign beasts have been making their way between realms for whatever reason, and after all, you can't keep a good hunt away from the huntress now can you? Naruto hummed in thought, filing that bit of info away for later, first the Greek goddess of wisdom and war finds herself in Vanaheim and now unseen beasts. This bore a closer look. I see. Well I wish y'all well on your hunt but I kind of have places to be. Scatty's face grew more eager, tilting to the side to appraise him as if he were a piece of prime cut meat. Running back to Asgard already, Balder? Don't tempt a girl with a good time after another one has just poached on her patch. So she knew, then. Bugger. Look, he heaved a sigh while tensing his legs, please don't fight. Fight, no, she licked her lips but I'm rather tempted to chase you to the realm tower and drag you back to my home in Udenheim to put a collar on you. His body shifted to the right, as if I'd let you do that. She matched him and let out a shrill peal of laughter, the spark of competition gleaming in her eye. I am a proud woman, Balder the Bright, in my hunt and with whom I claim. I respect the swift and the strong and those who are blessed with care in a harsh world. You healed my father when none would not for some angle of the Lord of the Hanged but because it was an honestly good thing to do. Her face dimpled in a smile. Then and there he knew she wasn't about to let him go so easily. I am fond of you, but to hear word of your union with the Valkyrie and now to nearly walk in on your latest tryst, she rolled her shoulders, limbering up. You're getting me in the mood for competition. Naruto's face softened in whimsy. Immortals had such odd thought processes. So perhaps just this once. While he still had an excess of energy to burn, he could indulge this flaxen haired lady of the hunt. I am not such easy game. Scatty's face practically shone in anticipation. Is that so? Then perhaps you'd care for a little wager. She walked past him and bade him to follow until the both of them stood atop a tall spire of rock. From here he could realm tower, a distant twinkle of gold metal in the distance. It seemed to shine in the sun, a beacon of gleaming light nearly out of sight. A race, Naruto exclaimed levelly, drawing a nod from Scatty in return, the taller woman's pelt sash rustling in the wind. From here to the realm tower, on foot, no powers or authorities, she declared, thrusting a finger forward. I shall start, you shall follow. If I arrive first then you come with me to Udenheim, where you will stay with me for the rest of your days. Odin wouldn't much like that. Then again, he really didn't give a flying fig for what the old man thought these days. Still, 
He didn't like the idea of leaving GNA and his family behind, never mind mom. No, as entertaining as it might be to give his old man an aneurysm, forsaking Asgard forever would inevitably cause too many problems in the long run. He didn't fail to notice that Sakdi hadn't mentioned the reverse. And if I catch you before we get there? He questioned, watching the giantess like a hawk. What then? Skadi turned to face him head on and crossed her arms beneath her bust. Then Esgard will sway to the sound of an Acer and a Jodan in union once again. Huh. A win-win. Somehow I think GNA is gonna have a problem with that. Naruto deadpanned. She's welcome to join us in bed, I'll be gentle with the both of you. What, too late did he realize that he had been led into a snare? Scatty slammed a palm into his solar plexus, sending him skidding backwards and momentarily knocking the wind from his lungs. It didn't stall him for long but by the time he looked to where Scatty had last been standing he saw the tips of her furred cloak vanishing over the edge of the cliff. Cheap shot! He shouted, scrambling to the drop and launching himself into the air with a mighty leap. He was answered by a peal of laughter far below and quickly spotted Scatty sprinting across the landscape of smaller peaks, sparse greenery and rocky crags that made up the landscape. She was grace in motion, darting from peak to peak like a nimble mountain goat, her white hair shining in the afternoon sun. Tucking in his arms and legs, Naruto dived towards the ground at terminal velocity, his glide ratio making up a third of the distance that Scatty had been able to open up ahead of him. As he fell he considered his options. Scatty was well known as the greatest cross-country runner in the entire Nine Realms but her specialty was snow, not the rocky prairies of Smartleheim. And her massive speed on the snow was yielded less by her prodigious speed and intuition but her skis which couldn't be deployed here. Meaning I got a chance, he said aloud, plowing through a rocky hillock with a crash, spooking a cohort of dwarves who had been trying in vain to shift it. While Scatty had said they were not allowed to use anything beyond their bodies, it didn't mean Naruto was not going to abuse his biological talents. One that had persisted from one life to the next was hard head and hardier body, meaning he could go as the crow flies and smash through anything in his path. Soon enough, scores of dwarves paused in their daily work and peeked from their tunnels to watch the chase across their homeland. The white and blue Jodan pranced through the air and along the ground, a leaf caught on the breeze while the blonde acer thundered in pursuit. The gap between them would grow and shrink sporadically, and every time Naruto came within a hair's breadth of tackling the statuesque runner to the ground did she slip through his grasp and continue the race to the realm tower. Scatty. You keep running from me even though you want to be caught. He wondered to himself. Is it victory over me that motivates you to prance and smile or the fact that the huntress is being hunted that thrills you? Soon enough, his waking thoughts bled away washed into the sea by the flood of instinct, the melody and rhythm of the hunt. He vaulted a boulder and planted his feet against it, springboarding off it with enough force to fragment it. He careened through the air towards Scatty and attempted to make a grab but the young woman must have felt a change in the wind, sliding under a low-hanging shelf of shale before rolling forwards in a front handspring that propelled her over a river, her pupilless eyes shining with mirth as she looked back at him. Rearing back a fist, Naruto smashed through the shale with a bang, grabbing a stray lump of rock as long as he was tall and throwing it at the river. The toss was perfect and it flew as straight as an arrow, hitting the water. Naruto did not break his stride and sprinted at the water. The moment his foot hit the shale plinth his momentum propelled it forwards, now both surfing across the river before pitching forwards when it hit the opposite bank and shooting Naruto into the air like a cannonball. You acer are all the same, brute forcing even in finesse. Scatty hollered, amused at Naruto's choice in making up the gap in skill. Never met a problem I couldn't punch my way out of, he answered, ironically kicking off an archway to get ahead of Scatty as the realm tower hoved into view. Scatty watched as he soared through the air at the bronze and gold tower, about to hit. Until he used it to slingshot back the other way, flying at her from the front like a fallen star with his arms wide. So close had she been to victory that she'd no time to react to his sudden reversal of fortune. Her eyes widened, lips parting in a gasp and then the world became a blur. He collided with Scatty full tilt, arms locked around her waist and sending them both rolling one over the other into the brush, laughing the whole time until they finally came to a stop with Scatty resting atop him. Well, straddling him, really. Despite his victory she seemed rather smug, or perhaps in spit eof it. Gotcha, he smirked, idly running a hand over the soft pelt she used as a waist sash. 
Scatty scoffed in reply, and yet I'm the one sitting atop you, tough choice. I don't see you getting up. Why would I? She touched a hand her shoulders, letting her cloak fall to the wayside. You've caught me, Balder. Her bodice soon joined it, freeing her heavenly bosom to his wanting eyes. She bared her upper torso to him without fear. Snow white skin gleaming in the waning light of the sun. Claim your prize. His throat went dry. There it is. She licked her lips. That's the look I've been waiting for. They shared that look, the golden light of the sunset capturing them both in a moment of time. Until, with no prompting at all, Scatty planted a hand on his chest and leaned down to kiss him deeply. It was no night in Asgard, that was for certain, but a Svartalheim sunset was a fine consolation prize in this race. Heimdall Odinson was nearing the end of his rope. It had been a long time coming and perhaps, definitely, deserved but his so-called half-brother Balder had finally pushed him towards his wit's end. The purple-eyed Acer could not tally the total list of debasement he had faced at the hands of the blue-eyed Dolt but something inside him had snapped upon his latest visit to the Whites of Healing. Healing for most gods was a surprisingly simple process when it came to conventionally wounds, just a case of time, stamina and willpower and wounds that would cripple a mortal would be rendered back to blemishless skin. Heimdall, blessed as he was as the god of foresight, had however never really gotten all that used to the sensation and truth be told he despised it because it implied that his abilities were not up to snuff. Ergo, whenever Balder had given him a summary drawing he had found his way to the whites of healing expedite the healing process, cussing his false half-brother out for every stitch. However, this last time had been different. In the last year, the majority of his abuse had been directed at his face, specifically his mouth and for whatever reason possibly some curse by his veneer harlot of a mother, his teeth had refused to grow back this time and he had been forced to be given a replacement. Allfather, that thing is out of control, Heimdall said, flashing his newly implanted gold teeth. His gums smarted with pain but he did not let it show on his face. I will never properly heal from this, I have to subsist on these, tacky dentures. Well at least you're finally put your money where your mouth is, Odin replied not looking up from the reams of parchment scattered across his desk. And I don't really see the issue. Roughhousing amidst brothers is as natural to Acer as breathing. I was the same with Billy and Bay. He's cursed my teeth to never regrow. Heimdall bleated, slamming a fist into Odin's desk and sending Hugin and Munin into the air, seeking shelter from the watchman's ornery wrath in the rafters. By the fire, Freki and Jerry looked up from their rest before returning their heads to the furred rug, unimpressed. Odin finally looked up from his writings, his electric blue eye equally unimpressed. If you got cursed then you simply weren't fast enough to get out of the way. Now would ya sit down? Your teeth are really mussing up the atmosphere in here. Hemdal let out a long suffering sigh before crumpling into the plush high backed chair opposite his father. Huh, father, he had always thought of Odin more as his king than his sire. Get it over with, he said picking out the building speech behind the Acer Lord's wizened face. Drumming his fingers on his desk, Odin fiddled with the rings on one of his hands before shuffling his papers into a neat pile, seeming to enjoy the annoyance it promoted in Heimdall. When he was finally finished he began to speak. Everyone has their place in this family, and with it a role. Thor is my hammer and livens up victory parties. His kids to a lesser extent but still, suitable blunt instruments. Tyr is my explorer and poster child, the one who finds peoples and lets them get to know of Asgard. Balder is my tracker and closer, forming the bonds where Tyr finds them. The golden boy that will hopefully get so randy with the women of the Nine Realms that wars will be won as soon as they hear the name Balderson. He. Is. Not. One. Of. Us, Heimdall enunciated, his eyes flashing with Burfrost light to punctuate the sentence. He would sooner rip your heart out and feed it to you than assure Asgard's dominance. He is an outsider, a cuckoo egg amidst your ravens. Odin pinched the bridge of his nose in consternation, his lips thinning, Ymir's balls. You are like one of that dimwit Snorri's poems, endlessly repeating things I already know. I'm edging a sleeping dragon here and you are tickling his balls. So long as he has no reason to act on his regicide then he won't. Subjects do not rebel when they are happy. You get that yaw gold toothed little shit? Heimdall gritted his teeth, nose wrinkling as his gums continued to throb. Seeing he was not going to be interrupted, Odin returned to his speech. Now, Seif, 
She's our diplomat to make sure that the bridges that Tyr and Balder build for us stay strong. A house divided against itself cannot stand so why not make the house bigger? Even now she's writing up a missive to that eagle-brained thunderhead Zeus for me, letting know we have her and she is safe as well as an open invitation to a breaking of bread and dining on wine between our pantheons. Ah, that little nugget. Yes, the blonde bearer of Yallerhorn had been more than aware of the effluvial scum that he considered the thoughts about the foreign goddess of war and wisdom. Surprisingly she was lodging with Seif and Thor and had made quite the impression on the Valkyrie who lorded her dexterity with shield and spear. How utterly repugnant. Asgard was for the Acer, no one else. Had Heimdall just a smidge more self-consciousness and humility he may have considered the true reason for his dislike of Athena and it was not her barbed tongue. She was incredibly difficult to read. His ability to peer into the minds and intent of others was almost completely foolproof with regards to surface thoughts but for whatever reason he could not parse deeply into Athena's mind. All it would yield was a reverberating echo in his cranium that was almost unintelligible, like her physical body was a manifested thought and to peek into her mind would produce unpleasant feedback. And where do I fit into all this? He eventually spat. Odin looked at him as if he had grown a second head, Balder most have really given it to you this time you know what you are in the plan. You're my watchman, you keep a lookout for threats. Heimdall ground his new teeth till blood began to spurt from the gums, yet still, Odin didn't relent. You hold on to Yallerhorn and come to Ragnarok, which gods forbid it never will, you will blow it and help lead the Einherjir to the fields of Gladshine. The younger god's hand tightened around the handle of his sword. You're my go to problem solver, I am so much more than that. Heimdall roared jumping to his feet and releasing a haze of prismatic bifrost energy from his body that reduced his seed to splinters. I am Heimdall, the white god, the god of foresight. I am he who illuminates the world and keeps Asgard safe. I am the son of Odin and the nine daughters of nine daughters of Agur and Ran. He drew his sword from its sheath and held it aloft, thundering with that same bifrost light, I am the wielder of Hofund. He who ushers in the end and will live beyond it. I have as many names as there are winds, as many titles as there are ways to die. I, A. M. Heimdall, and I will be of use. From his seat, Odin watched his son with neutral interest as he panted, getting a hold of his emotions. When he was sure that Heimdall was not about to commit his own attempt at regicide, he silently got to his feet and opened a drawer in his desk. A few moments of rummaging passed before he withdrew what Heimdall recognized as Odin's perpetual muse, the broken wooden mask. The gallows god turned on his heel and strode towards the back of his office, unlocking the door and opening it. Heimdall, having regained a handle on his emotions, felt a swell of unease at the pit of his stomach. Allfather. You coming or what? Odin asked nonchalantly, looking over his shoulder before descending into the basement. Heimdall sheathed Hofun and soon found himself following Odin until they stood before the crack in the world, its eerie green light illuminating both of them. You want to be of use? Odin asked rhetorically before passing the half mask to Heimdall. By all means, take a look. Heimdall looked between the mask and the Allfather, not quite comprehending what he was being asked to do. Ah, good grief. Odin took off his hat and tossed it at the desk before launching into an explanation. What I want, as you have always known, is answers. And the closest I ever got was the glimpse I saw on the other side of this thing. He indicated the crack dismissively. I had hoped to find the rest of that mask before taking another look but, it's clear you want to help now. And you are the god of foresight, maybe you'll see something I didn't. Was this a jest? A trick of some sort? It might be, and yet? Heimdall held his king's gaze for a few moments more before turning to face the crack in reality, approaching it until the little sliver of green was right in front of him. He could see, he could not put it into words but there was something there. With a shadow of his old arrogance he lifted the half-mask to his face and pressed it to his forehead, using his other hand to cover the other side of his face. His vision took on a green hue and he began to see trace streams of energy emerging from the crack before, with no preamble, his pressed his masked eye up against the crack and gazed into infinity. For a few minutes he stood there in silence and looked, Odin pacing behind him impatiently, waiting for an answer. And then it happened. Heimdall recoiled as if he had been smacked, a stream of green light flowing from his masked eye. The mask dropped to the floor and clattered dully as the watchman of the Acer fell to his knees, pressing his hands over his face and shook. 
but before Odin had a chance to ask what his watchman had seen, or for less important, if he was okay, Heimdall began to laugh. It was a haunting thing, realization and true unadulterated mirth beyond measure yet carrying all the bad intent of an oncoming storm. When he pulled his hands away, revealing one green eye and the other purple, he laughed in knowledge of what he had seen even as his brain groaned in pain. For he finally had a tangible piece of information to level against his so-called half-brother. And he would use this knowledge, oh yes. That fool of a god. He had no idea. His days were numbered. You are not the only foreign soul in this land, Balder. And I will be the one to find them. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.